All right, everyone. Happy, happy Sunday. We are back with our live discussions for The Idol. And um, look, man, I briefly said it last week and even the week before. There's a good show here. There is a good show within this show. And we saw it tonight. I think we really, as there's an echo here, let me uh, let me get exit out of this right quick. But there's a good show here, guys. Uh, there we go. There's an echo. There's some good meat here, man. This was, last week was the best episode. But now I say this week was the best episode. And uh, a lot of stuff was revealed. Again, go back to the tapes, man. <laughs> I think I said in episode one, there's something about Jocelyn. It doesn't really seem right. There's something about this whole kind of, um, you know, facade or this innocence to her that might not be authentic. It might not be entirely true uh, as we kind of explore that in tonight's episode. And they gave us they gave us that tonight. So there's there's a lot to talk about. I'm very excited to be here with you all. It will just be myself. Uh, I won't won't have any special guests, but I got y'all with me, right? I got the the fam with me. The um, People that's been watching this from day one, I appreciate y'all, man. And we got a lot to discuss, man. This was, this was a good episode. I ain't going to lie. It was not a lot of that nonsense we began the previous three weeks. Kind of got straight to the point. We exposed more of the characters. We learned more about the characters. Like I said, Jocelyn, there's a lot on a lot of stuff revealed about her tonight that we saw. And Tedros, uh, <laughs> he saw that side of her, which I'm like, okay. I'm liking this, yo. So look, we got a lot to discuss. Again, I appreciate y'all joining me tonight. If you guys are having a good time, enjoy tonight's episode. Excited to talk about the episode. Do me a favor and uh, hit that like button, man. It's free. Free 99. doesn't cost a thing. But if you guys can support the channel, I appreciate it by hitting the like button, sharing the stream. And with it being just me, we're going to have a lot more time to kind of interact with the chat. So I'm going to try my best to get to you all's comments as I do my breakdown every week and uh, see what good nuggets you guys have and what things you guys took away from the episode. And look, I know there's some people that, that hate this show, don't like this show, and I understand why. But I'm going to be honest, man. I thought this was a really good episode of uh, The Idol. And not just because The Idol. I think this was a pretty solid episode of television uh, because of all this, you know what, <laughs> we've been going through. Got to climb through the, you know, go through all that nonsense to actually get to the good stuff and as I saw at the end of this episode, when they show the trailer, next week's the finale. I could have sworn this was a six-episode season, so it's like, it's just starting now, getting good, and you're going to be in it next week. So, hey, we'll get into that tonight, but let me say what's up to everyone in the chat, man. Let me see what we got in the chat. See how y'all feeling about it. Let's see. Uh, this was a dumpster fire. Hey, I disagree. I disagree. Uh, hey, alien chat, uh, some substance and less sex like did. Isaac needs to assault Xavier or Xander and just address him again in the episode. Yeah, I mean, there are moments, but like I said, those at this point, to, to Zia's point, as far as that scene that we'll talk about, I mean, this is the show, right? We've seen people do outrageous things, assaulting people, uh, harassing people, embarrassing people verbally, physically. That's the show. So at this point, I mean, that, that wasn't shocking to me. And honestly, there was nothing um, as far as the obscene nature of like the sexuality that we've explored in the sexual scenes. Like, I wasn't really shocked by it. Like I said, I guess I'm just desensitized to it at this point, but I didn't really find really anything in this episode like extremely shocking besides, which we'll talk about, Jocelyn singing her Fill the Void song and what the week or Tedros was doing to her. That, that was unnecessary. But again, they planted that seed in episode one. That's how they get down. So we'll get into it. We will definitely get into it. But to your point, though, you remove all the BS Remove all the nonsense. There's some actually good stuff going on here. Exploring these characters, exploring what fame can do to someone, exploring, you know, a a, a wolf in sheep's clothing, right? With Jocelyn. Like I said, run the tape back. Watch episode one, man. When me and when me and nine was talking, I'm like, man, there's something about Jocelyn that might not be as uh, apparent right now. So I'm de definitely excited to talk about that with you all a little bit in tonight's breakdown. Um, let's see, let's see. Let's see what else we got here. Will be therapy based on how you watch it. <laughs> Am I the only one? Did y'all not enjoy tonight's episode? We will definitely address that. The uh, do we believe? I mean, I think the actions what Jocelyn did tonight kind of showed her true nature. But we'll talk about who was the liar and who was uh, maybe telling the truth here. 
I don't see how they're going to wrap this up. Yeah, like I said, I could have sworn. I might be wrong, but I remember back when the show, like a week before it started, and when HBO was sending out the like the press notes and all that, I could have sworn I said it was six episode uh, limited series, which that was kind of up in the air when there was a, an article talking about it was only going to be uh, one season and, and things of that nature. So, but I could have sworn I said it was six episodes. So not that even if they would have gotten another episode that they would have filled out all the, the not necessarily like unanswered questions, but like there seems to be a lot more story to be told. Uh, and that goes back to all the stuff behind the scenes and them reworking the show that maybe that was all they can salvage a salvage with uh, the reshoots and all this stuff before the show had to hit a release date. So yeah, one, one episode that, that shocked me if I'm being honest with you, that did shock me. Yeah. We'll talk about Xander. He was uh yeah, I think a lot of us believe like I said, the, the ending gave, gave away a pretty much, uh, well, I want to say pretty much, but it gave away that side of Jocelyn. Like you can believe that Xander was probably telling the truth. But uh, like I said, man, let me know. listen. I was just literally about to say, regardless of how y'all feel about Jocelyn, Tedros, Xander, <laughs> you name it. Listen, man, Destiny, give her a spinoff. You know what I'm saying? Let's get a special episode with her. And I have in my notes here, and I told y'all weeks ago that I'm a big fan of the uh, the actress that plays Destiny. Um, her name is slipping right now, but she is fantastic. And listen, uh, Divine Joy Rudolph uh, Randolph is her name. Sam Livingston would be crazy to not hire her or bring her back. Not for the idol, but I'm talking about Euphoria season three. We need her with that mix of <laughs> kids and that cast. She's fantastic. She is 100% the MVP. She was fine. Like, my, like, if you would inject her character in those first three episodes more than what we got with her, we would be talking about a completely different show because she is she's the audience. She's us, right? With a little bit more funk and, and, and swag to her, right? She has that that side where she's implementing herself in the situation, scouting that situation. Like, listen, we're gonna get into Destiny. She was the she's the MVP of the show, not only this episode, but the show. But yes, the yeah, 100 percent can agree with you more. Um, so let's see what people are saying with I enjoyed this episode. I enjoyed episode three. Hey, I said it last week. Last week was the best, you know, the first. 15 minutes or so when they were in the store and the, all that stupid stuff they were doing in the store. But after that, it seems like when they stay in this house, <laughs> the weekend's house, that's where the magic happens, I guess. You need to stay focused. Um, but yeah, the, last week was good and this week was good. Like I said, there, there's a there's a good show amongst all the nonsense <laughs> that we got to get here. So uh, it was bad. <laughs> hey, I enjoyed it. Let me know in the comments, uh, Carmel, uh, as far as like what was it that didn't work for you in this episode? I thought from the previous three, it kind of really built up to showing people's true colors. So I, I, I enjoyed that element of tonight's episode for sure. But I'm going to read a couple more comments here, and then we're just going to get into the full breakdown. Um, let me see. Yeah, Chloe, that was – she's great too. I really enjoyed her character and that that scene that she had with um, – with, Des with Destiny was a really good scene. Uh, how old are you? Uh, seven, um, 18. <laughs> it was definitely some some really good moments here. Um, all right. So with that being said, man, let's get and y'all agree with me, right? MVP, MVP. She was the MVP, man. I, I'm a big Destiny fan, man. She is. She's awesome, man. Like I said, Divine is just a great actress. I think the first time I, I uh, saw her was. Um, 2020 or 2019 the uh the eddie murphy movie where uh he was a comedian uh dolomite was my name that was the first time i saw her and then i saw her in some other things like she was in the most recent season of only murderers in the building and she's been in some other stuff man but she's she's fire bro I'm, I'm a big fan of her as an actress and i really like i said sam bring her back for uh euphoria season three put her in the mix as like i don't know someone's sister or friend because apparently they're going to be in college let 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 her be like a college professor or some something like that man she she got that she got that it factor man she's she's an idol <laughs> if you ask me uh and yes before we get into it this comment right here 100 percent, man talk about good tv the bear the most recent season of the bear fire man oh favorite show of the year uh it, it it you know went over last of us that was one of my top shows swarm which was great succession barry all that stuff is great 
Barry season two or Barry season two, the bear season two best show on TV. Of course we got, you know, six more months of the year, but I, I find it hard to believe that another show is going to top what we got with the bear. If you guys, number one, if you haven't seen season one, go watch the bear 30 minute episodes, 10 episodes. I blasted through season one in like a day. Season two, I took my time, you know, uh, yes, chef, you know, eating this full course meal. I took my time with season two and really paid attention to the story, the character. Now, listen, we could have a whole streamer about the bear. I'm just saying, watch the bear. <laughs> season two was great. Sydney, I don't know, guys. I'm not shipping Sydney and, uh, and uh, you know, Cam. That's, listen, that's a whole other conversation, man. <laughs> but the bear is great. If you guys haven't watched that, highly, highly, highly recommend you all give that a watch. But we're not here to talk about the bear. We're here to talk about the idol episode four. So as you all know, uh, again, we've been doing this for the past four weeks, and I really appreciate y'all joining me on this journey because without y'all, I don't know if I would have been able to stick stick around <laughs> with the show, but y'all make it fun. You know, I, I won't have nine joining me tonight, but it was, it's always fun having, I think he'll be joining me next week, probably for the finale, but y'all have made this a journey fun and uh, we're about to break it down tonight. So with that being said, let's get into it, y'all. So welcome, 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 everyone. We are here with our after show for episode four of The Idol, which was titled Stars Belong to the World, a very perfect title for tonight's episode because there were some stars. And I'm going to tell you all right now up top, this was the show I was hoping for four weeks ago. This was the show that I was hoping we'd explore these type of characters. Again, we've been led to believe that Tedros, this cult leader, is manipulating Jocelyn, getting to her head, destroying her career, left, right, up, and down. But tonight showed us the real star of the show is Jocelyn. She, her, her true colors came out tonight, man. And who do you believe? Xander or Jocelyn? Based on the last five, ten minutes of the episode, calling up the ex-boyfriend, which, by the way, was that the boyfriend with the picture from episode one, or was that someone else entirely? Rob, we see Jocelyn's true colors, man, and uh, a lot to discuss about her, a lot to talk about with Tedros, a lot of stuff going on in the episode with, uh, with Xander, but we talked about it before we went to this breakdown here. Shout out to the MVP, and that's Destiny, Divine. MVP, y'all. But we got a lot to discuss. But I want to know your thoughts as we break it down in the comments now. Pros, cons. What do you like? What did you dislike? Based on the trailer, one episode left. So this is the, the, the penultimate episode, which I thought was a pretty solid episode. But let's get into the actual episode here, y'all. Because again, there was a lot to go over. A full hour of some pretty intriguing stuff. And we opened the episode with, uh, number one, let me know if you guys were in the same wavelength as me. I thought, because it seems to me, correct me if I'm wrong, but every episode seems to be like the next day, kind of like, you know, if you guys watch the most recent season of Succession, every episode was the following day. And this seems to take that same type of method as far as we're in it with the characters. Like, there's not a lot of time between episodes. Like, we're right there. There's not like off screen discussions, off screen development. We're seeing these characters wake up, make music, do drugs, do crazy things, go to sleep, and do it all over again. So, but when we open this episode, there's like leaves on the ground and, and things like that. I'm like, are we fast forward? Like, are we time jumping? But as we see later in the episode, now this follows on for what happened the episode before. But I'm thinking like, whoa, we just jumping ahead. But nonetheless, we see the control of Tedros. He, he now has security guards with ARs. You know, we. <laughs> I'm not going to lie, y'all. I was laughing my ass off when we get to kind of montage of all the people uh, you know, the, the, the security guards, <laughs> we get the maids, man, cleaning up the house. You know, there's cocaine all over the house, stuff like that. I'm not going to have this on the screen that long because I don't want YouTube to pull it down, but I just had, I thought this was so funny. It's going to be on the screen for like 0.2 seconds, but y'all know what I'm talking about. <laughs> you probably, uh, hopefully YouTube doesn't flag it, but you can see what the maid on the left or might be on the right of your screen, what she has in her hand and what she throws it in the trash can. Listen. If this show was hitting these type of comedic beats, the character stuff that we're going to talk about later, having Destiny being, hell, Destiny should have been the goddamn star of the show. If they would have been focusing on that stuff more, this show would have been a hit. <laughs> but anyway, I thought the opening was pretty damn funny with the maids cleaning all the coke and the, and the sex toys all over the house. But then also, too, we have um, the maids talking about he has a, you know, his Haida, Napoleon complex. All that stuff was working for me. But Getting to the seriousness here, going back to this tradition 
or this kind of routine of sorts of this taking care of me mindset that Jocelyn has allowed Ted Jost to think that he's taking care of her. We're going to circle back to that later. He's doing the, you know, cleaning her legs in the bathtub. And the reason I want to bring that up now is because later in the episode, Rob tells Jocelyn when, when she, you know, makes her video for her friends about what her mother did to her, which now makes you wonder that whole scenario. We'll get into that later, but I go, I'm bringing this up now is because this taking care of me thing is what she did for her mom when she was sick. It also just makes you think about this whole relationship, with, and which makes me want, I wish we would have got it like one scene, like a flashback of her and her mom interacting, or maybe the first scene of, of season one of this particular show, we should have saw her like on her deathbed or at, or at the hospital room, like saying her goodbyes to her mom, just to kind of plant that seed. But nonetheless, she did this to her mom, and now we see that taken care of, and Tedros kind of stepping in as the mom. And again, the way my mind's working after this episode, I'm starting to think that Jocelyn was the one that was kind of the the Joe Jackson of the situation, kind of making it seem like her mom was the one that, I mean, she abused her, but maybe Jocelyn was like the one, I want you to hit me, mom. Like, I want, like, it's a lot of questions out there after tonight's reveal. Let me know what you all think about all that stuff. But cut to the MVP. Again, I am such a big fan of Divine, and I think she is just eating this role up. Like, there's a lot of uneven characteristics. There's a lot of, like, kind of, things that characters are doing, like, it's not consistent is the word I'm looking for. But the character that has been consistent since the first time we saw her on screen has been Divine Joy. Like, whatever it was from the first script before Sam Levison became the director to obviously it got into his hands, she seems to be the most consistent. So, again, I don't know if she was, like, always viewed as this way from when they first established the show to, like I said, to he got into his hands because she is just – She's clicking on all cylinders. And again, whether it was last week, the week before, <laughs> the week before, but more particularly this week, she stole this episode. Her whole getting the situation underhand, she tells him the uh, his real name, which was like an Italian name, but he ain't Italian. His mom, you know, mom and dad just thought it would be cool to give him an Italian name. But we get the information here from Destiny that back in 2012, you know, Tedros, Mr. Jackson here, kidnapped his girlfriend and beat her up. So, again, this whole episode is really exposing. And we got a little bit of that last week. We knew he was something was stinky and messed up about this guy. But he, sir, as we find out, he was in jail for six years, y'all. And I'm I'm actually wondering, too, like, if... Uh, you know, because the way Jocelyn was talking about the story and how she was just kind of dismissive about it, I'm I'm wondering, going back to Jocelyn just being like the, the puppet master, orchestrating this whole thing and making it seem like she was, you know, fell into this trap. I wonder if she knew stuff about Ted Jones before this whole thing even popped off. I'm I'm like if she maybe she knows who the ex girlfriend was. I don't, I don't now I'm just theorizing, <laughs> coming up with stuff. But again, the. The, the the reveals of Joss in this episode makes me just kind of think back on all the stuff from the previous episodes. But nonetheless, we find out that he was in jail in 2012. You know, she tells him we need to kill this dude, which I still think that's going to be in play. There's uh, and, and I wouldn't be surprised if Leia is the one that's going to kill uh, Tedros by the end of the show. But we get Destiny, a.k.a. as she calls herself, <laughs> the Black Panther. She infiltrates herself into this situation at Jocelyn's house or, or now Tedros' house and pays them a visit. But going back to, I was, I, I'm jokingly saying it, but I'm, I'm being for real at the same time as far as handling of the, um, the Leia character. I really have a feeling that she's going to, and I, and I've been saying this for the weeks, the last few weeks now. There's something more to her, and there's something that's going to happen with her character that might be something as dramatic as killing someone uh, and that person being Tedros, because she was, she was getting. Um, embarrassed she's been getting embarrassed by him this entire season but no more so than tonight's episode i, I felt bad and I've, I've have felt bad for leia throughout this series but tonight man i'm like let's slap this dude and slap, rip, rip his rap tail right at the back of his head he was he was he's been pissing me off this whole show but tonight it was he was getting on my damn nerve the way he was treating leia but you know we see that she is you know telling him the day's plan because again it's tedros house he needs to know who's in who's out who's doing all this stuff and he you know he has his he's eating his breakfast and all this stuff and he's sitting there shooting down all the day's plan which could consist of the um 
meeting people in the industry, like legends in the industry, meeting with Jocelyn to make her career, you know, more sustainable and, and continue to grow her career and stuff like that. He's like, ah, nah, we don't need to meet with them. Give me the next one. Then he mentions Jocelyn uh, and Leia have a, a, a makeup company together and, and she's excited and wants to do all that stuff with the makeup company. He's like, nah, I'm good. We don't need to worry about all that. So again, these are just the little seeds of how he's shooting her down, being very dismissive of her and her agency and her being the best friend and more than just an assistant. And these are just many of examples of how this is, I could be completely wrong, but I feel like all this stuff is going to lead to her pushing him off the balcony, hiring someone to kill him, doing something crazy. Like I'm telling y'all, man, keep an eye out for Leia when it comes to next week's finale. But as we move past this, we get the uh, introduction. I didn't think he was going to actually show up because he is an actual icon. And that's, uh, you know, Mike Dean, who uh, is a famous producer for a lot of different, you know, they mentioned Kanye last week. But he is a legendary producer for a lot of different artists. And he's actually here live in the flesh. Again, I thought they were going to probably do like what TV shows and movies do when they name drop someone and like they'll just show them from the back or like they'll be very blurred out. You really can't make out their face. But he's he's here. He showed up, uh, the legend himself. And as he shows up, he's going through the house and they're trying to find the right room to make the music. They inevitably do so. And. They're making magic, man. Uh, they're making some actually. The music in this show has been okay. Some of the original songs of the weekend has been making, producing for the show has been. Again, I mentioned it weeks ago. I don't, I'm not like a weekend expert. Like I've heard his songs, his hit singles, but I, I've never listened to an entire album of his. And a lot of the original music he's made for the show so far has been has been solid. The Jocelyn music has been very, and I think that's purposeful. The Jocelyn music hasn't been the greatest, but as she's kind of now intertwined with Tedros, and especially in tonight's episode, I was, uh, I'm not saying I would buy this, listen to it in my car, but I'm like, this is some, the, the, the music they made in tonight's episode, the Fill the Void song, um, and even put in Chloe side for a second, I'm a big fan of, I think she's an actual artist, the actress that plays Chloe. That girl got talent, and we'll talk about her. How old are you? Uh, seven, uh, 18? <laughs> we'll talk about that scene here in a second. But the music in tonight's episode, let me know if I'm tripping, but I was very, very much vibing with it. But we see this whole, again, this wolf in sheep's clothing as they're making the music. And, you know, we have Jocelyn making this song, and she's coming up with the lyrics. And she tells Tedros, again, very purposeful, building his his kind of his ego making him think he's in control i don't like making decisions on my own i like i trust you enough to make decisions for me again it's very purposeful it is very intentional the words that she's choosing to use on this man and again i'm not let me just make this clear by no means am I saying that, oh, Jocelyn's the big bad of the show and Tedros is just being played and sucked up into a web. That is, that's not, there, to an extent, I am saying that to a little bit, but I'm not dismissing his toxic behavior. They're both toxic individuals. They don't remind me of it, but they kind of do. I don't know if y'all used to watch uh, back in the day. I say back in the day, like it was 20 years ago. It was probably like five, seven years ago. VH1, and I still think they have it, had um, Love and Hip Hop. You guys don't know what I'm talking about. Look it up. But in the last season, I know they still have season, but the last season I watched, there was a dude who is a producer, pretty, you know, well-known producer, Stevie J. And jo I think her name was, was it, was it Jocelyn? Jo she's a, she's a wannabe singer. I don't like her music at all. The few songs I've heard of her. I think her name was Jocelyn. She's like a Puerto Rican wildfire, crazy ass individual. This episode reminded me of Stevie J and Jocelyn <laughs> because those two and some of the show is very tongue in cheek. Like a lot of the stuff they did on the show was like for viewership and numbers and to, you know, shock value. But some of it was, you know, some effed up people in the world. But I'm just saying all that to say Google, if you haven't, if you don't know what I'm talking about, Google Stevie J and Jocelyn and you'll get a very similar vibe of how. Now, the only thing that's different is our Jocelyn in the show is already established artist versus love and hip-hop. Jocelyn was trying to get into the hip-hop industry as an R&B singer, rapper, whatever. And Stevie J was the one that was already established in the, in the music industry. So this is kind of the, like a an amalgamation of those two people that I'm talking about. Let me know if y'all if y'all got a similar vibe. But getting into some stuff that I really enjoyed about tonight's episode, again, all this stuff so far is just like 
interesting, right? The, the music making, you have full agency over me. I'm giving you full control. Give it him. And we'll talk about her later. Why Why is she doing this? Why, if, if it is to be true that she has been the one, that has, as Xander says later, she's been controlling, she's always been controlling, she manipulates everyone. Why would she go to the lengths of having Tedros being involved? We'll talk about that later. But before we do, we're actually about 30 minutes in. Let me see what y'all been talking about before we get back into my breakdown here. Let me see. Let me see. Let me see if y'all were were uh, agreeing with me with the uh, love and hip hop comparisons here. Let me see. What's up? What's up, Nikki? How we doing tonight? How we doing? Uh, you, you remember that show? Listen, I ain't gonna lie. Back in the day, your boy used to be a fiend. I don't have cable now, so I don't watch like cable TV like at all. But I used to be watching those, you know, sipping my tea, watching the drama. Because of my personal life, I try to stay as away from as much drama and, and unnecessary drama as possible. But I used to watch it, right? Uh, loving hip hop, all those silly ass flavor flayed New York dating shows, MTV, you know, all that stuff, man. But nowadays, you know, I'm I've matured. I don't steep to those lows. <laughs> I'm joking, man. I just don't have cable. If I, if I did, I'll probably still be watching that nonsense. But y'all remember those, right? Uh, it's not Tedros House. It's Dawson. Well, Nikki, I'm very aware that it's, it's Johnson's house. I'm saying he's taking control over the house. But if you're saying, if you're playing into what I'm saying, you're now saying, no, it's been Johnson's house this whole time. He thinks it's his house. But it's really, I, if that's what you're saying, I totally agree with you. Um, Stevie J. So it was Johnson. Okay, I couldn't remember her damn name. Uh, Jocelyn Hernandez. Yes, 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 yes. Jocelyn. Yeah, y'all know who I was talking about. And I think she's... I saw a clip on Twitter like a week and a half ago. They uh, This was another show I used to watch back in the day, uh, College Hill. And I think they have a College Hill like celebrity, or I say celebrity. <laughs> These are like, <laughs> I want to diminish their careers, but <laughs> they have celebrities on the show. And I think Jocelyn was on one of them or on the most recent season. If they have multiple seasons, I'm not sure. But I know she was on the most recent cast and she got into a fight with uh, Kanye's, uh, what's her name? Amber Rose, I think. But anyway, we we getting off track. All I say is, yes, Jocelyn Hernandez is a uh, straight up, Wow, she was she was something else, and she apparently she hasn't learned anything. She's still as crazy as she was ten years ago, right? Uh, Chloe is a powerhouse. Chloe is, I think she's an actual an artist, like an actual singer or something in like reality, because that girl is talented. Like she is super super talented. So I'm gonna definitely have to look into her uh, history a little bit more and see what uh, what kind of music she's cooking up because she she's a she's a pretty talented individual. But uh, let me see any other. Questions, comments, concerns you guys have of all the stuff I've been talking about thus far before we get back. <laughs> the Golden Age of Tragedy. What year was that, Nikki? Was that like 2000? Was I, I'm trying to remember where I, because I think I was living in New York. So that had to be like 2013, 14, something like that. Uh, that was, that was, that was <laughs> the Golden Age of Tragedy. Uh, reality stars. Yeah, 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 yeah. Uh, let's see here. Uh, people never gave the idol from the start because of Sam. Yeah, we talked about that, especially in episode one, the the drama behind the scenes and all that. So the, yeah, there's definitely some hate watchers out there, and you know, to each their own. I've said it, and I'll say it again. I'm a, I'm a fan of the things I've seen of his uh, Euphoria season one and two, Assassination Nation, Malcolm and Marie. Um, you know, I'm not saying the guy's perfect by any means, but I, I like his uh, his Artur stylistic choices that he puts in his shows. And I think he has some, some good character stuff. You know, Zendaya is the reason why she, you know, gets uh, the nominations every year because number one, she's talented, but she has, uh, you know, rules a pretty, pretty interesting character. I don't know, has her own shoe. Wait, she has her own shoe and some low budget channel app. I wouldn't be surprised. Those, uh, I wouldn't be surprised, man. But uh, hey, man, to, to, to each their own, man. I mean, I know no disrespect to... Uh, um, what's her name? Cardi B, but she wasn't she on Love and Hip Hop one time, two times, three times. Was she on Love and Hip Hop like New York, if I'm not mistaken? Like, and she uh, she came up from that, correct me if I'm wrong. Wasn't she on Love and Hip Hop? And I don't remember who she used to date, it was that light skinned producer. Y'all making me go back, <laughs> y'all making me go back to those trashy ass shows. But I'm if I'm not mistaken, correct me if I'm wrong, but wasn't Cardi B on one of those seasons on uh, Love and Hip Hop, like New York or whatnot? Correct me if I'm wrong. But look, 
since it is solo dolo, I got to uh, transition to some scenes and I'm going to set it up before we get back. But I'm going to have a quick commercial break for you all, a sponsor for today's uh, live stream. And we are going to be uh, tossing it over to the fine folks at uh, Into the AM. I don't have one of their shirts on tonight, but I have a ton of the shirts in my closet. But I'm going to do a quick little sponsorship for Into the AM. Check them out. Today's video is sponsored by Into the AM. Into the AM is a clothing company with a variety of amazing products such as t-shirts, hoodies, jackets, shorts and underwear, headwear and much more. Their t-shirts have unique designs, they're incredibly soft and extremely comfortable and they're made to last. But the best part is you can get 10% off by using my discount code MOVIEFILES when you're selecting your new gear which you can find that code in the description below. All right, so shout out to Into the AM sponsoring today's video. Like I said, I don't have one of their amazing shirts on tonight, but I have like seven, eight of their shirts in my closet. Great material, a lot of great designs. They also have a, a bunch of other apparel. So if you guys are looking for some new swag, it is officially summertime. Definitely check out the link in the description of this video. Again, just check them out. You don't have to buy anything. It, help, it definitely helps out the channel if you guys want to help on that level. But more importantly, it can help you out. Swag up for the summertime, y'all. So definitely check them out. And if you guys see something you like, you can use my discount code. And uh, and I think they have like a, a summer savings right now. So you can use the savings, get my discount. You know what I'm saying? You're going to be looking like, you're going to be looking better than Tedros. I'd tell you that with the swag. But definitely check out Into the AM uh, sponsor of today's video. So let's get back into the breakdown, y'all. And, and this these scenes here to me, Again, I already have alluded to it and talked about it that she was my MVP, but these are the reasons why. And also, you know, co MVP, Chloe. Um, we have the scene with Chloe meeting Destiny for the first time. She plays the piano for her and she's singing and all that good stuff. And again, this is Destiny and her plans of planting herself into the house, but also very smart on Destiny's part. Let me not only make myself present in this home, but let me maybe gravitate towards one of these people and maybe latch on to them, get some background information. And, and this, by no means, I don't find it to be Destiny taking advantage of Chloe because, as we find out, she is a minor. But I think it's just more or less of, like, these people over talk. <laughs> they, they, let, they let too much out, and they're also high all the time. So, anyway, we see Destiny is talking to her, and she gets the information uh, about... Tedros and how she came about finding her, which she was on the streets, which she was on, you know, heroin, and he saved her. You know, he saved Isaac, he saved all these broken people. Uh, at least he thinks he's saving them. But we get all that information. But the big information is when Destiny says, Oh, how old are you, by the way? Um, Chloe, and she says, Oh, I'm seven or 18, eight, and it's like, damn, man, he's prying on these young, broken individuals that don't need his help. They need people to take care of them, help them out in situations, but unfortunately, he got their hands on them at a young age, or at least in her case, at a young age. I don't know how old he was, uh, how old Isaac was, or how old um, Diane was, and all the other people in his cult. Ramsey, I think is the other person's name. I don't know how old they were, but he definitely preyed on her, got his claws on her at a young age, which is sad, man, because... Again, I go back to what this show could have really did a great job at, you know, four weeks ago. And who's to say that this wasn't the idea when the show was first came to its exception before, you know, Sam became the director. But there, this is the kind of stuff that I think the show could have really put a, put a spotlight on. Yes, the backstory, exploring a pop star and all the evil stuff and the drugs and hip, you know, and the uh, hypocrisies of, of the industry and people backstabbing. That's the intrigue. But then it's people like the Chloe's of the world. Like, how does someone at that young age get warped into someone like Tedros and tries to give them this idea that he can make her famous? Like, there's so much that the show has to offer, man. The Chloe's of the world, the um, Diane, who we'll talk about, the world. There's so much stuff going on, but it's just compacted into this hour show. In the past three weeks, again, there's been some highs, but there's been a lot of lows, like all the filler. And again, I, I like I've expressed myself on this show, these after shows. I don't think the sexual stuff has been like super offensive or inappropriate, at least to me. It's unnecessary, but I don't think it's like as shocking. And I know to each their own, but I don't think like have y'all not seen HBO for the past 20 years? Have you not seen Game of Thrones? incest and all this like i'm just saying this show ain't as as shocking as as you know a lot of the online discussion has been but putting that aside when you put that aside is an actual good show here 
with some interesting stuff, but it's just not enough. There's not enough substance going on. There's a lot of style, not the best style. I'm looking at you, Tedros, but there is a lot of substance that just I don't think had the opportunity to really express itself, to, to lead the show. But we'll talk about that a little bit later. But again, going back to what I liked about the scene, I like their bond because, and say what you will, I think Destiny was being honest. I think she was being true. I think she wasn't, some of it was getting information, give me some tea for I can use it against Ted Dross and really figure out what's going on. But I think she was actually giving her knowledge. She was putting her own game because she's talking about it. And from everything we've seen so far from Chloe, she tells us she's pure hearted. There hasn't been anything in the show that has told me otherwise. As far as her being a nice person, you know, young, um, you know, uh, person that was getting swept up into all this stuff and having Tedros tell her all this stuff. But she tells her she's pure hearted. And I, and I think that Chloe is a pure hearted person. And she tells her to not allow people to take advantage of her talent and to steal her talent and to use her talent against her. Now, I don't know if that's going to lead to <clears throat> Chloe talking up against Tedros if it comes to something happens tragically happens to Jocelyn something you know and what I mean tragic is maybe taking it a step further to what he did to his ex-girlfriend and maybe I'm talking about Tedros might die at the hands of Leia maybe Tedros is going to be the one that's going to maybe tragically kill this icon and and Jocelyn and when the police come and find out what's been going on, maybe Chloe is going to be that one that's going to tell the truth and tell them all the stuff that Tedros has done to really put him in jail, you know, as he belongs. Not, you know, not just six years, but, you know, many more years. So I don't know if that's this scene is going to point to that. Again, I might be giving the show more credit than it deserves, and this might not ever come up again. And we go, we got one episode left. So, but I don't know. Let me know if you guys think that Chloe is going to be someone to maybe take that advice. And even if it's not to the degree I just mentioned, people die and going to jail, but just like maybe she's going to detach herself from the situation. However this explodes, however this winds up, that Chloe's going to be the one that's not going to go down the path and end up like Isaac, Ramsey, and all his other people in the cult. So let me know what you all think about Chloe in the weeks ahead, or say in the week ahead with the finale. But again, I don't want to, I want to uh, manifest this. Sam Levison, Euphoria Season 3. I would be interested in the Chloe character. Like I would, she fits right into those tragic characters and those teenagers who, by the time we see them in season three, will be in college. Apparently, I would like to see that actress get in the mix with, uh, like, if if I were to take anything from this show and, and maybe implement it into Euphoria, which I think is a way more superior show than this, Chloe as an actress, I would like to see her. But more importantly, Divine Joy Rudolph uh, Randolph, get her in Euphoria season three. She would be the icon like have her be like i said a uh, professor of rue <laughs> or have her be someone because she is just a star man i think she is fantastic but again that's probably that episode or this particular moment in the episode was was pretty fire to me it was really good dialogue some really good stuff going on there but as that's going on we have the entourage coming into the studio and again we got drugs and all this stuff going on in the background and this is the, you know, we talk about maybe the, the show going too far and maybe having unnecessary, you know, scenes that just don't need to do anything, but it plays into this toxicity and plays into their relationship. I'm referring to Jocelyn and Tedro. So paparazzi's there and uh, not the paparazzi, but the entourage is there. We get another example of Tedros embarrassing Leia because I think she's like, she needs to go to the bathroom. And he's like, shut the, you know, be quiet and just embarrassing her. Again, Leia, you don't have to kill them, but I, I hope, I pray, come next week, Leia's going to pimp slap him like he did the the, the trenches last week, the, the health guy, the, the chef last week, the personal chef, slap him like he did her, do something. Because my goodness, my, my man needs an ass whooping. Hopefully Leia's the one that's going to give it to him. But he embarrasses her. But this is the stuff that I'm talking about a little bit earlier regarding how the show lacks focus or lacks the, like there's bits and pieces, but it's all over the place. Like I, this plot to me has been so underdeveloped. It's interesting, but it really is just, it just feels like it's there. And I'm referring to the Diane scenes. Now, we knew from episode one, she was a backup dancer, befriending Jocelyn. Lo and behold, and you know, going back to the tapes, watch my episode one, I, I always had a feeling that maybe Diane was setting her friend up, which ended up being the case. 
Nikki sees her, brings her in, and now we see that she's offering her this deal. She's giving her the world, which I don't know if this is just uh, more of, you know, showing the side of the business. Like, where are her representatives? Diane has no lawyers. She has, you know, her manager is if Tedros, if you want to call him that. But she has no one there to read over the contracts to get everything in pen and paper like she's just living the life like this is a young you know if you know you could say this is like Jocelyn 2.0 but without her mom being there but again this is an interesting story because this is the whole idea of these people being taken advantage of again we had the scene with Destiny telling Chloe, don't let people take advantage of you. And we kind of see that following up with this scene because, again, and, and not to say that Nikki is fully taking advantage of Diane. Like, this is the career she wanted. Like, this is what she wanted. But I don't feel as, as though she has the people backing her up like she should have, like a good foundation of people to look out for her. But the reason I say that this is a good plot is because if it was fleshed out more, there's an interesting parallel going on with Diane and Joss because, again, we're seeing the industry preying on these young people, giving them the, the world, the platter, giving them the whole, you know, the tours, the music, the T-shirts, the marketing, the, all that stuff, right? So while that's going on, the reverse of what's going on with Joss and as we, as we thought that Tedros is preying on her, but we obviously see that's a little bit different. So I don't know if the parallel is saying, okay, Diane is being taken advantage of by Nikki and she's going to end up like Joss in 10 years or with her being behind the scenes with Tedro, she's actually playing them. It's something there is what I'm getting at. But it's just I wish we would have spent more time on maybe having those two separate pl those storylines going on at the same time to come to an intersect, which happens a little bit later when Jocelyn finds out what Diane's been doing. But I feel like it could have been something more dynamic. A little bit more interesting if they would have played it out better and wrote it out a little bit more because Diane um, has there's something there, but I don't think the show has handled that as well as they should have. But cut back to Destiny telling Chloe again to stay true to herself, and while all that's going on, we see Tedros is uh, you know we go back to the studio and we see her giving giving her tips, giving Jocelyn tips, and. The tips are taken, they document it, but then, you know, we see Tedros going the extra step, doing his Tedros thing and taking it to another level. Now, again, I would say normally this is, this is whack, man. This is like so unnecessary because this scene is very, very explicit, I would say, uh, compared to like, this was the probably the most shocking moment of the episode, but it plays into the narrative because we've seen this activity. We've seen this behavior by these two back in episode one. The behavior I'm referring to, and I'm trying to find like a, an appropriate enough screenshot to uh, to lay over as we're going over this uh, the scene here. I guess I'll just use this one here because this is probably the most safest one because <laughs> it gets a little, uh, you know, a little bit... Not right for the censorship of YouTube. So we're going to pull up this, this screenshot here. And y'all know the scene I'm talking about. And this is where we get the tips from Destiny. She tells her to put a little bit more oomph in it, put a little more funk on it. And Tedro said, I could do one better for you, Destiny. He pulls out the blindfold. And again, I want y'all to notice it's Jocelyn that's taking it the extra step, you know, tightening it tighter double knot it this is part of her process right we got to remember that now knowing that we know at the end of this episode but the only thing that's different from this scene in episode one is episode one they were getting their freak on with no one in the room not this time around i mean mike dean's in a room y'all know the scene everyone's in a room and he's you know pleasuring her in front of everyone to get that out of her let me know what y'all thought about this scene again. This is the stuff that I think the show is just a little unnecessary. I think some of the more sexual stuff, and, and you see everyone in the room is kind of like, not everyone's embarrassed because everyone kind of knows Tedros, this is his methods. But I, I'm going to bring up one picture here because one person that was, that seemed to be bothered by it was Isaac. You know, Isaac obviously has his history with Tedros. We know a couple weeks ago he had the shock collar on him and all that stuff. But he seems to be uncomfortable. You see the face on Leia. She's just like, you know, from last week, driving to the mall and what they were doing in the back seat to now, she's completely thrown off and completely uncomfortable. But, you know, um, 
again, I just want to point out that Jocelyn allowed this. You know, and again, we'll talk about her her whole situation at the end. But again, it's just important to note that she's allowing this just as much as as he's doing these actions, right? So, um, and he's just smiling. That man, I can't wait to whatever happens to him. I can't wait. I hope it's an ass whooping uh, coming up in the finale. But Destiny calls. Let's. Um, I mean, I know what's going on. That number one, there's kids in this house, but number two. Jocelyn is doing all these crazy things. It's kinky, wild stuff going on here. Fifty Shades of you know Gray or Fifty Shades of Tedros going on in here and telling all her concerns and whatnot. And and as all that's going on, again, she's mentioning that this is a house not full of crackheads. It's a house full of talented stars, right? She talks about Chloe being a poet and didn't even know it. She's talking about Isaac. She's talking about uh, Ramsey. Like these are talented individuals. So. And as she proceeds to say, this is some crazy shit that's going on in this house, but this is some, whatever he's doing is getting the best out of them. Because she details, like, as he's abusing, you know, Jocelyn and doing these routines and doing these rituals of a source that it gets the best out of them. It gets the talent out of them because the, the line of this episode or the title of this episode was Stars Belong to the World, which I think was a really great line when Isaac says to... Leia, as we'll talk about the scene here, that, you know, she's not a human being. She's a star, you know, that, and that's a really, and again, I hate to sound like a broken record, but that's the stuff that I wish the show would have explored so much more than some of the terrible writing and terrible dialogue that we got in, in the earlier parts of the, of the show. But she's telling, you know, all this stuff on the phone. But again, I want to go back to Leia because, again, I'm, I'm, I'm putting my hat in the ring. I'm putting my money on it that something as big is going to happen with Leia. That might involve uh, Tedros or maybe, you know, I'm talking about Chloe leaving him. Maybe this is where, you know, Chloe is an inspiration for Leia to leave this whole situation, but more importantly, leave her best friend, um, Jocelyn. But we have this conversation between Leia and Isaac as she's addressing her concerns with what's going on. And he just pretty much dismisses her and says, this is part of the process and that you are an obstacle. You are destroying the process. You are getting in the way of the process. And again, this is my favorite line in the episode because I think a lot of people um, sometimes think of movie stars, actors, singers, producers, athletes, you know, people in the public, they look at them as something more than human. Look at them as an idol, right? And when Isaac says to her, She's not a human because she's a star. And she, again, this is a fire line. They belong to the world. So I don't agree with that as I'm saying this, but that is a very much so from an outsider looking in and just kind of observing. And listen, I'm a fan of a lot of people, you know, movie stars, actors, but I don't hold them to a pedestal. Like I don't hold them into the, in the limelight and don't look at them other than just being human beings, but they obviously have, you know, position of power and gotten opportunities to, to have their, talents be exposed to millions of people, but I never look at them more than what they actually are, which is just a human being, just like me and you, right? They just are in a different position in life. But that is a really great line. And again, if the show would have really focused on that more, if we would have gotten more of like how last week we saw Jocelyn's fans outside of the, the, the club or outside of the, the store, and if we would have really honed in on this sense of like, how stars can feel like they can't be human, how stars can feel like they're closed in and they have people that don't support them and how the industry takes advantage of them. There could have been a lot there that the show could have offered. But that, that was a scene I definitely wanted to point out because I thought that that line was pretty fire and it speaks a lot to what's going on in this show uh, with a lot of people. But before we move on, let me go back to the, to the live chat, see what you guys are talking about, see what, what stuff you guys are... Um, Agreeing or maybe disagreeing with what I'm saying so far before we uh, we get back into it. So let me see. Let me get over to the comments because the next part here is going to be really spicy. Xander. That stuff going on with him was some really interesting stuff. Uh, but let's see. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. Check out the sponsor, y'all. Check it out. And, and also, thank you, Zia. If we got 122 people here, I appreciate y'all joining me tonight on our after show you could have been anywhere in the world tonight but you're here with me talking about the show i think the bet awards is tonight there's uh you know a bunch of great movies in theaters right now and, and you guys can just be enjoying your life so the fact that you all are here with me i appreciate you do me a favor if you're enjoying the commentary and having a good time with myself and, and hopefully you guys are having fun in the chat with each other 
hit that thumbs up, man. I really appreciate that. Potentially hit the share button. If you know other people that like enjoying this show, <laughs> then definitely share. And um, leave your thoughts in the chat, man. Leave your thoughts in the chat. I'm going to do my best to try to get to them because a lot of good stuff here. A lot of good stuff you guys have. Yeah, <laughs> that's like an oxymoron, right? Swag and Tedros did not belong in the same sentence. <laughs> that is for sure. Looking better than Tedros is pretty low bar. <laughs> great, great scene uh, in Destiny's voice. Yeah, she was. She hit the. She hit the little notes. She's a. She's an all star, man. She can do it all. Divine, the divine can do it all. I love her, man. End up saving. I hope so. I hope so. I hope she like signs her. Yeah, that's a great point. I I hope she signs her, brings her in the mix, and uh, I would love to see that. It's a great point. If Justin was smart, she would sign all of them under Tedros' nose. I like where you're at. I like where you're at, Bree Cheese. Please, I like where you're at. I like that a lot. Um, very very great point there. That shot of Tedro standing on the balcony and Jocelyn's legs and ass in the bed at the beginning of the episode was fire. Yeah, again, um, there's been some really great cinematography, great, sh great shot selections for sure. Uh, my notes in this scene is that Destiny has producer chops or direction. I'm not too sure the terminology, but this is a great input. Yeah, no, she's a, she's a great manager, right? This is what you would hope that people that are in the position to steer these uh, great talents, once in a generational type of talents, that they have the personal connection, but also they care for who they're, you know, potentially managing. So yeah, I think that she's just a great manager um, to an extent because she, she didn't uh, do a great job of keeping Tedros in line and, and making sure that he, he doesn't implement himself in this house. But again, go back to what we'll talk about here in a second, Jocelyn allowing him to, you know, put himself in that position. So we'll, we'll definitely talk about that for sure. Um, do, 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 do. <clears throat> I just had a look online. A lot of the online news articles seem to say that it's six episodes. I wonder why. Yeah, I said that up top. Uh, <laughs> pig in a, in a wheelchair. Um, and great uh, icon there. Is that uh, Patrick from... Uh, SpongeBob, but um, yeah, I set that up top, man. That I I, I could have sworn that the press releases, all the stuff on IMDb was like six episodes, six episodes. So, and again, if you guys stuck around to the end of the trailer, it says on next week's finale, one episode left. I, I I don't know what happened. I don't know. Maybe they'll give us a surprise episode. Like if you guys are fans of Euphoria, um, there were between seasons uh, one and two, they had two special episodes. One that was on Rue. And one that was on uh, Jules, and, but there's not going to be a season two with this show from everything I'm hearing. So I don't, I don't know. I, I doubt they're going to have a special episode. But I, yeah, I was very much under the impression that there was a six episode um, season, but apparently not. <laughs> they threw it out. Which again, I know there's a lot of hate on the show, and some of it is deservingly so. Some of it I think is not warranted. But um, I would doubt, regardless of the hate. This show has been getting, you know, it's not Game of Thrones, Succession, House of Dragon numbers, but it's been getting great viewership in the last few weeks. You know, it's talked about online <clears throat> like crazy. Twitter, TikTok, you name it. So, I mean, the popularity is there. So I would be shocked if like HBO was like, oh, the show's getting so much, you know, um, negativity. We, we got to cut it. We got to cut it off. Forget six episodes. I don't know. I doubt that because I don't think HBO, like they, of course, listen to their fans both good and the bad, but I don't think the fans would have a show, you know, have an HBO or say Max, you know, change the trajectory of this show and cutting it for one episode because of the negative. I, I doubt that. So yeah, I'm very curious on the whole six to seven or six to five episodes situation. Um, we got a little theory here. My guess is Xander killing Jocelyn over the weekend. That could be because he definitely he'll he definitely uh did him a favor. We'll talk about that later. Let me see here. Episode five slash six better be an hour and a half. Yeah, I think so far the premiere episode was the longest. It was like an hour and 15, if I'm not mistaken. She's a child. Yeah, you're talking about um, Chloe. Yeah, she. Yeah, she's she's a minor. She is a minor. Right? Give her, give her a spinoff. I'm right there, which I will watch the hell out of that show, too. We need more of her. <laughs> um, ain't no teachers in euphoria. That's what I'm saying. There ain't no teachers. We need teachers. Cause again, from what I remember about what they said season three, because one of the biggest things that people knew was gonna happen with these big 
gaps of between seasons. Like, yo, these actors <laughs> are damn near 30. The the actress, I can't think of her name right now, but the actress that played Maddie, she's like 33 years old. She doesn't look it, you know, but she's playing a 17, 18 year old. And Zendaya just turned 20, or maybe I'm thinking of um, Tom Holland just turned 28. But I think Zendaya is like 25, 26. So like, they're going to have to catch up to those actors being in, uh, you know, their mid 20s. So I, I read that they're going to have them be in college. And I would love a teacher to be, you know, a character and it being played by, uh, you know, the uh, divine. I, I think that would be dope. Let's see. Let's see. Drop any more before we jump back into the, the breakdown. Put any more comments, uh, questions you guys might have, and then uh, I'll try to get to them. In the meantime, let me get ready for our next big scene, which was um, the Xander stuff, which was uh, was really, really interesting, guys. But let me, let me get to that. Like I said, while I get to that, just drop any, and to make it easier for me, because you guys are awesome. A lot of great comments. It's sometimes hard to read through them. If you have a question or a comment, like an important comment you want to bring up to the chat, like put in, you don't have to put the whole things in caps. So just put in caps, Q&A, and then put your question. Or if you have a comment, just put all caps comment so I can read it off and uh, make sure we get, get a conversation going around it so we can get that going. <clears throat> all right, let me find this scene here. Like I said, guys, I was very much really like in tonight's episode the only things that i said that I, that I wish was a little bit more fleshed out was the whole diane storyline just feels like it feels like they just throw it in there randomly in the show but i think the intentions is, is to kind of show the parallel of the praying nature or the 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 advantage at the comp or the industry the music industry and just any industry of that matter of this uh you know whether it's actors or singers <clears throat> taking advantage of these young artists and them controlling their lives and controlling their royalties and controlling their masters and all that stuff and not really having the proper people backing them up and comparing that to Jocelyn. But I don't, I don't think they handled that storyline so much, so well. Uh, but that's probably my biggest issue with tonight's episode is just how they throw in her, that character, Diane. You could tell that there was probably more to her storyline than what the show has been giving us. But that's probably my only issue that I have with the episode tonight, guys. But let me see. Moving on. <clears throat> Should we bring up? I don't know if this did you guys. I, I might leave this out of the breakdown portion of the video, but just to kind of pose a question to you all in the chat. Um, let me bring this up here. Which you know what? I might as well just throw it into the to the breakdown because it is a, a question I have for y'all and everyone watching the, the stream and the breakdown later. Let's talk about this scene here. So it was, it was a quick scene, short scene, but we have the journalists from Vanity Fair who we've seen in episode one and two, kind of giving a FaceTime call to Jocelyn, and they're having a conversation regarding, you know, I will hope you're doing well, hope everything's good. And Jocelyn, like, you know, I'm sorry about what happened last time, yada, yada, yada. But I don't know where that's going. <laughs> because based on episode one and two, with her, the Vanity Fair journalist being there, you know, she's making this, this story about this icon, this pop star in her life, and her losing her mom, and going on tour, the mental breakdown, but then she was absent last week, and then her just popping up in this episode just seemed kind of odd, so I don't know exactly where they're taking that plot. Initially, I thought that this journalist was going to make this, like, smear campaign on Jocelyn and make her look, you know, worse in the limelight, but I don't know if there's even time for that plot, because, again, I can see where they're going with the whole media journalists because you know they can make or break your career you know uh one bad review or you know especially this seems to be like a think piece on jocelyn the artist she can reveal some really nasty you know vulnerable stuff out there so i don't know if the let me know in the comments if you guys think the journalist aspect will be pivotal in next week's finale or if, if it's one of those plots that just kind of feels like it's thrown together and doesn't really go anywhere but only thing i can think of right now is that the journalist is going to you know, maybe Jocelyn's been thinking she's going to have this big piece in Vanity Fair, <coughs> but she's really going to just be a small piece of the Diane piece. Like the, she's going to be 
like a small little headline or a small little paragraph about how Diane got into the industry. She was the backup, like the headline is backup singer of Jocelyn, now a megastar. And Jocelyn thinking this whole piece is going to be about her, but it's actually just her being just a part of the inclined uh, career of, of uh, Diane. That's the only thing I can really see that plot going. But let me know what you all think about that. But let's get into this here. And um, I'm talking about Xander and talking about one of the creepiest shots of the show so far. And that is Xander's taking a shower. He's me, 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 la, 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 singing in the shower. You know, everyone in the show is apparently an artist except for... <laughs> No, no shades to Lily, uh, Lily Depp. She's great. She's she's been a great actress, but you can tell she's not an, a singer. <laughs> you know that's not her full time gig. But everyone else in the show can sing <laughs> really good, actually, uh, except for the, the the actual singer. But neither here. Xander's in the shower. You know, hitting those high notes. And like I said, the creepiest shot. I don't know which one is creepier. When. Tedros popped up in episode one with his blade uh, jacket in the dark, looking like, you know, a vampire, or or was it this one here? Bro, if this dude was in my bedroom looking like Shadow Man, um, this hiding out in the corner, man, that is a straight shot to the, to the, to the nostrils, man. I'm knocking him out, bro. He's in a, this is a great shot, by the way. I will say this is a great shot because it's like he's looming in the dark. And, you know, me and Nine, who's been the co-host last few weeks, been joking, he's a vampire. He's the devil. <laughs> but none of that, this is a great shot, guys, because it's like he's preying on his victims through the shadows, lurking in the shadows like a creep that he is. This is a great shot here. But none, none, neither here nor there. This is the meat and the potatoes of, essentially, this episode, which is who to believe. Because Xander is singing, and, you know, we have creepy Tedros coming up behind him, scaring him. But again, regardless of how we feel about Tedros, the guy has an eye for talent. And right now he has his eyes on Xander. And Xander tells him that the um, his vocal cords were hurt or something like that. Was injured or something. That he made. It seems to be that he made this up because as we find out in the scene, we find out that Xander tells Tedros that his mom, jo Jocelyn's mom, outed him when he was 13. And that crippled him. Like he didn't want to, because it seems like he was maybe going to be, you know, the next big thing to Jocelyn or maybe being the next Jocelyn. But that didn't happen because right now, as an audience, we're led to believe that, oh man, you know, Jocelyn's mom. Outed him at a young age, crippled his his uh, his insecurities, crippled his you know his confidence in himself, and it kind of derailed him from being the next big star and having her daughter be the star. But it seems to be that's not the case, as we'll get to here in a second. Because as we pivot over to some really dark stuff here, what is the meaning of family? We have Tedros lining up all these people in the house, and it, who are all these who who are these people? By the way. Um, just random people, <laughs> supermodels just randomly in the, in the house, but they're lining him up, but he's more here for Xander. And he talks about, you know, family means to serve, means, means to be a servant. And Tedros um, has Xander step forward. And Xander is, he's up on game. He's like, oh, hell no. <laughs> you know, he runs off and he has, Tedros has, um, the uh his sec bald security guy i don't even know if he has a name just another weirdo what's his backstory guys what did he did is can he sing because <laughs> he a, is he a talented singer he has him go get him and, and isaac they bring him back y'all and this is where the question of the night comes up into play so xander's now taken he's strapped down you know and by the way jocelyn's coming down with that i think it's the same shot caller that um Tedros used on Isaac a couple weeks ago. She has it in her hands. Oh, thank you, baby. You know what I'm saying? And she initially, when he runs away, she tells her, she's like, ah, I don't know, Ted, maybe you're going a little bit too hard. Maybe this is a little bit crazy. He's like, no. Like, again, servant. I'm devoted to you. I'm, de You know, you have my complete loyalty. And again, I want y'all to notice something, especially the screenshot here. 
oh no, Tedros, don't do this to my best friend or one of my friends, close friends since I was a kid. Don't do this to him. And all of a sudden she goes from don't hurt him to, okay, do what you do. Go ahead, punish him for hurting from hurting me. Again, a wolf in sheep's clothing, y'all. But we have the scene play out. And Tedros is shocking him, trying to get the truth for hurting Jocelyn. And by hurting Jocelyn, he's referring to why did you allow Jocelyn's mom <clears throat> to manipulate, to beat her, to take advantage of her? Why didn't you do anything? And he's like, I did do something. I tried to do something. I tried to speak up. But then, as he reveals that every time I would try to speak up, Jocelyn would stop me. And the reason she would stop me, and it goes even further down, is he says that his Jocelyn's mom made him sign a contract to stop singing. You know, he didn't have any vocal cord, vocal cord issues. Jocelyn's like, he's lying, this, that, and the other. But we find out, y'all, that it was Jocelyn that stunted his career, that put his career on hold, that had her mom had him sign the contract because as he says that she's in control of everything. Now, this is the question I have for y'all is by everything, do we think that Jocelyn's mom was this big, bad wolf in a stint, in an extent that she was the one that was forcing this fandom, this fame, this lifestyle on her daughter was be beating, abusing her daughter to get the talent out of her daughter. Or do we think it was Jocelyn? who, I mean, this is some, you know, dark stuff, but like having her mom <clears throat> do all this stuff, beat me in front of these people to make it seem like I'm this young girl getting abused by my mom. But in, in hindsight and behind closed doors, she was telling her mom to do this, to get the best out of her. This is some, again, man, this is where the show like, oh, okay, what, what's, what's going on here, right? Some some really twisted stuff, man. And then again, the question is, do you believe Xander or do you believe Jocelyn? Saying that he's lying and all this stuff. By the end of the episode, I got my answer. But the question I have for y'all is, who do you believe? And just to pose my answer, Jocelyn, I think she is the manipulator. Like, And I've said, like again, you can watch the tapes. I said this, I think a couple, uh, episode one, I said that I feel like Jocelyn, there's more to her character. Like I think that she's, I said it last week, that she poses to be kind of incompetent. She poses to kind of pretend like she doesn't know what's going on, but she definitely knows what's going on. And I, and I love how the episode kind of exposed that. And and again, I, I'm jokingly talking about how she can't sing. I don't really think she can sing, but I don't. it doesn't really matter. Lily Depp is a really great actress. Um, I've only seen her in a handful of things prior to this. I saw her in that Timothy Chalamet movie on Netflix, The King. She was in this one really stupid YA movie, Voyager or something, with her and T uh, Taylor Sheridan. They were in space. Terrible movie. Um, and she was in this other movie called Wolf. She's a good actress, man, and she really is showing her chops in this show. Like, I think that she's a really great actress because when she sit, when we see that switch and we see that tear in her eye, <clears throat> going back to, and this is my mind, my, my mind's uh, coming back to me. The reason I said that I think that she's a, a, a manipulating or maybe faking this whole thing is think about episode one. The very first scene of the show was her doing the photo shoot for her album, and the, the photographer you know, laugh, be sexy, this, that, and the third, cry. And she was able to do that at a drop of a dime. She was able to switch up her persona, switch up her personality, switch up her attitude so quickly. That's a talent. That's something that is learned. That's something that's not taught. That's something that you learn on your own and manipulating situations. That's some good stuff, man. And again, that's why I say that Lily Jane, oh Lily James, Lily Rose Depp is a is a really good actress, and she's really doing a good job in the show. And I love how the show has been kind of leading us on to make us, you know, root for. Because by all means, Tedros is a terrible individual, and he has been doing some really inappropriate things to her and and, and things of that nature. But now, in retrospect, looking back at it, Jocelyn allowed all that stuff to be to to happen, right? She she doesn't allow anything to happen without it going through her. So. I love that kind of reveal. Again, it makes the audience think if he's lying or if she's lying. I think it's, I think it's really good stuff, man. Again, I wish the show just would have done a better job of uh, 
handling that more so than the final, you know, two episodes or whatnot. But as that's happening, Xander says, you know, she's even worse than her mom, right? She is, um, you know, manipulative. She's she's evil. She's dark. She's twisted. He's saying all this stuff. And while he's saying that, I'm going to see if I can find the shot, but I can't find the exact shot, but I'm going to use this shot here. When Xander's saying all that stuff, I want y'all to notice, and again, I'm not on his side by any means, but I want y'all to notice that Tedros is kind of surprised by this. And I think what I mean by surprise is that he has this moment of like, wait a minute. Have I been getting played? This, this have I been getting manipulated this whole time? Now I think he's dismissive of it because he's like, no, 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 she ain't, no, 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 she ain't, you know, she ain't been playing me. But I love that moment there, man, because he has a moment of like, kind of like, wait a minute, hold up, has a player been getting played? And I'm not saying he's a player. I think he's terrible. I'm just saying, like, in his mind, he thinks he's a player, right? But I love that stuff there, man. I really do, and and it goes back to. Later in this episode, when he's on the, the steps with Jocelyn getting on with Mr. Rob, didn't feel bad for him, but I'm like, <laughs> yes, hell yeah. Now you know what it feels like to be manipulated, to be taken advantage of, to be played. Uh, I love that scene. So again, the show at its moments has these great little character moments, great character beats, nice little reveals um that it leads up to so i really enjoyed that scene a lot guys and again the question in the comments i have for you all is you know who do you believe do you believe jocelyn do you believe xander look at that face there man like she is and then she i think that it's the writings on the wall i there, i'm sure there's people that are gonna be like no team jocelyn i root for you all day she can do no wrong uh which is again the, the beauty of the show is you can have people picking sides and falling in love with these characters but i don't think the show has done a good enough job to do that except for destiny and even Chloe, uh, and and uh, you know, I like Layla, uh, Lila. But the the question again is: Look at that face when she tells Tedros again, again, again. It's some good stuff, man. It's some good stuff. She's been the villain this whole time. It's a, it's, a, it's a lot of bull crap with this show, but there's some there's some diamond in the rough. It's a diamond in the rough there, man. But again, I, I thought that was a fantastic scene, guys. But as we move on, and also the reason I thought it was also great is because we go from that scene of her, you know, you would think she would be in this kind of like mindset of like, oh, man, I really screwed up my friend, this and the other. No, man, she used that fuel and went to the studio and made another hit song, man. I, I don't know the name of the song, but it was, I think essentially the song was, uh, I think it was like Tough Love, I think was the was the was like the, the hook of the song that like... All this stuff that has been that's been transpired from not only Tedros, but from her mom, her career, her life, her lifestyle choices, the photo, the, the, the photo on episode one, you know, all the stuff going on. This is her way of like getting the best out of her. This is Jocelyn. This is just like my whole thought of the character, Jocelyn. Why the question at hand is why would she manipulate the situation? Why would she allow Tedros? Like, what's the point of having him get involved in her life? Well, Again, this makes me think that she knew he who he was before he knew who she was in a sense of like, let me play a game on her. She was playing a game on him. She might have knew about the whole girlfriend thing, that this is some sick, twisted individual that abuses women. Well, I can use him as my replacement with my mom. He can beat me and get the best out of me. Again, she needs therapy. <laughs> she needs therapy, y'all. She She has this career low with her losing her mom. She's directionless. She doesn't know where to go. The people in her life, Destiny, her managers, Nikki, they can't get the best out of her. But this sick, twisted, uh, woman, woman abuser, misogynistic individual can get this out of me. And I'm going to use him to get the best out of me. I'm going to use him to think he's in control. I'm going to use him for tough love. So, again, it's it's a slow burn. It's it, You got to get through the dirt to find it. But it's some interesting stuff there, man. It's it's a really, really interesting perspective because, again, for what I remember what the show was going to initially kind of be focusing on was a pop star artist, a female artist who was going to be showing, being taken advantage of in the in the music industry. You know, we've seen those stories before, and we need to see more of them because it is a a thing that is, is, needs to be out there. But for me, as someone that consumes a lot of movies and TV shows and, and storytelling, this is an interesting angle. Because, again, you're led to believe that this character is 
down and out, you know, has no one in her corner. But then you find out this whole time that she's been manipulating everyone around her. So that is a more interesting story than just your stereotypical. And again, not, I don't want to say stereotypical, like brushing off and uh, negating stories that need to be told of how people are taken advantage of. And in any industry, in, in life in general, but in particularly in this music industry, have this star be the one that invokes all the chaos and all the madness. So I, I don't know, man. I think that's some an interesting storyline that could have been great. <laughs> could have been great. But God damn, they had to fill us in with some really trashy dialogue, some terrible acting at points from the weekend, and just some really unnecessary like scenes that just felt hollow. Anyway, speaking of hollow, uh, my man Xander is like is empty right now. He just doesn't know what to do. He's lost. He's confused. He's you know kind of trapped in the situation. Like. I finally spoke up the truth. I finally said what I think about Jocelyn. He calls her all these types of names, and now he's punished for allowing the truth to be out. And again, that's Tedros. He gets the truth out of people, right, by any means necessary. But we have this scene. He, like, pees his pants, and Isaac comes in there and cleans him up <clears throat> and does all this stuff. And the reason I bring this scene up is because this is an important scene. Also, too, I like how they cut between – him getting, um, you know, clean and bathed by Xander, and they cut that between Jocelyn, or not even cut between because it's, it's later in the day. But they have a scene where Jocelyn's talking to Desi, and they cut these scenes together, uh, very purposeful because I think it's, there's a storyline going on there. Isaac tells Xander, "I feel bad for you. I'm gonna let you go," and Tedro sees the talent in you. But she, you have to do a favor for him. I want y'all to remember that, that there's a favor that's needed to be done that Xander's going to have to accomplish. We'll go back to that here in a little bit. But as that's going on, again, this goes into the whole thing about what's going on with, with Jocelyn. You know, Destiny kind of, oh, man, I love this character so much. Destiny is so damn smart because she knows, you know, obviously we find on this episode, she knows who Tedros really is. He went to jail for six years for, you know, beating up and kidnapping his ex-girlfriend. But then Jocelyn is telling her side of the story or telling what Tedros told her that, you know, oh, they got into this kind of fight and she hit him in the fence. He hit her back, yada, yada, yada. Now, again, I don't know if this is the manipulative side of Jocelyn telling Destiny the side of the story to make it seem like he's just a misunderstood guy, or if this is just still a part of Jocelyn's kind of game that she's playing of like, let me get her off the scent of Tedros and kind of play it into like, no, he's a misunderstood individual, yada, yada, yada. So let me know in the comments if you guys think this was part of her game or if she was actually kind of maybe Biden say like he's just a harmless dude got him caught up in the wrong situation he's a he's not a man beater or a woman beater he's just misunderstood let me know what you all thought about that but neither way <clears throat> regardless of how you look at it she's be being dismissive of what he actually did you know abusing a woman and being a, a pimp and pimping out these women and stuff like that like how she's underplaying or whatnot so and again like I said as that was going on Isaac tells Xander he needs to do a favor to Tedros which he might cash that favor in a little bit later in this episode. But before we move on to the rest of this episode, because we're going to wrap up the, the breakdown and we're going to stay around for a couple more minutes and, and, and talk to you all and see what you got going on in the comment section. Let me just uh, get the, the next uh, uh, screenshots ready here so we can break it all down. And then I'm going to check in with you guys. And I think we're up to 124, 130, 132 of y'all joining in live. Uh, it's 11 p.m. here Central Time, I am. So, look, man, y'all are dope. Y'all are the real MVPs. I appreciate y'all being here. If you're enjoying the conversation, if you're enjoying the, uh, you know, you guys in the chat again, it's, let me tell y'all, behind the scenes, uh, doing one of these lives. It is, you know, pulling up photos, reading the comments, trying to keep the conversation going while having a dog going crazy on the side. It could be a bit uh, much at times, but I say all that to say, I love that you all interact with each other in the comments and keep the conversation going there while I'm doing my thing here. So I appreciate y'all, man. And if y'all appreciate me and appreciate the conversation, do me a favor, man, hit that thumbs up. It goes a long way. It's free. You can do it on your phone. You can do it on your tablet. 
could do it on computer. I don't know if you could do it on your TV unless you got one of them smart, smart TVs, but <laughs> give it a thumbs up. Uh, consider sharing this video to anyone and everyone you know that's still around watching the show, talking about the show. And then again, try, I'm going to do my best. To, I'm going to right now, I'm going to try to get to the comments, but definitely continue to leave your thoughts in the comments. And, I, and by the way, if I don't respond or bring up a comment during a live chat, I make sure in the back screen of the live to leave the live um, comments after the show premieres. Because I go back and read them, man. Because like I said, man, I, I really do appreciate y'all being here, commenting. And if I don't get to answer a question or, or read a question off, I like to go back and, and see what you guys are talking about. So definitely keep the comments going, guys. So with that, let's see what's up in the comment section. Uh, Mike the Goat. Oh, yeah, Mike. Mike Dean. Yeah, he's a, he's a legend, man. He got some some straight up bangers, man. C career, one of the best, you know, R&B, uh, hip hop type of uh, producers out there, man. Uh, quickly, let me see. Again, you guys are, are great, man. With the comments here, I'm just trying to find <coughs> maybe a question or a comment. I'm about 10 minutes in. Oh, so we got some people still watching the episode. I think he was just wiping him, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, he was. He, if you look at the scene, Xander pissed himself, man, which rightfully so. I don't, I, I don't know what Ted Jones and dudes are capable of, so I would be pretty, pretty nervous myself, but yeah, he peed himself, so Xander was. Or not Xander, but Isaac was uh, cleaning them up. All right, let's see. Uh, Josh is a bad person and low key. Yeah. Again, I think, and this goes back to my comments on Lily, Lily Depp, Lily Rose Depp. Like she has, she has this face to her that has like a sense of. Like there's an innocence to her, like a vulnerability to her, but there's also like a mystery to her. Like she has a very unique face, um, very uh, expressive face where again, she can look like a supermodel that you think might not know what's one plus one, but then she can also look like a boss. She can also look like she can, you know, make you do anything she wants you to do. So like, I think that and that's the, the beauty of acting, right? It's not just giving off lines and, and stuff like that. It's body language. It's facial expressions. It's how you emote. It's how you react. It's how you respond to certain things with your, you know, your, your face. So I think that she, uh, she, I'm not saying she's the greatest actress of all time, but I, I see the pieces there that she could be, you know, she's very young, you know, and she comes from, you know, regardless of how you feel about Johnny Depp, she comes from a pretty talented family. Uh, I think her mom is, a is a, is an artist too. I think she's a model. Um, but that's, a, that's art as well. And she's an artist as well. So yeah, man, no, I think she's, uh, she's great. She, she's great. And I say all that to bring it back to your question. Yeah. I wouldn't feel bad for her, right? Like there's moments in the show where you feel bad for, her, but after tonight's reveal, you know, yeah, for her, her career ends is like, she made the bed and she has to sleep in it. So yeah. 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 So for sure. For sure. Um, Yep. Sorry, guys. Like I said, I got a maniac here. My little dog. Get down, boy. Get down. There you go. Um, shout out to the dog owners out there. They're the best, right? Uh, Josh is evil. It's all an act. Yep. Mm -hmm. Yes, it is. Yes, it is. Um, all these people don't have family or anyone to advocate for them. That's why it's too easy to live. Yep. It's a great point. <clears throat> That's a great point. Um, some great stuff here. Keep it coming, guys. Keep it coming. Then we'll pop back and, and wrap up the episode. What's up with the drug use? I mean, you got addicts. <laughs> you got people that unfortunately, um, you know, allow drugs to consume them. You know, some people rely on drugs to get the best creative sides out of them. So, yeah, a lot, a lot of drugs, a lot of sex and drugs and rock and roll. In this house, it's LA. Everyone, I was gonna say, yeah, it is La La Land, right? It's highly weird, right? So, I mean, people, like I said, uses drugs as, as a clutch. A nipple baby, <laughs> that's, that's funny. Uh, the war on drugs hasn't been seen or one game for the biggest side. I bombastic side. I wouldn't. This is controlling each other. Yeah, yeah, that's what I said. Yeah, that great call. That's what I was saying when I was doing that. Like, you notice his face. He was like, wait, wait, am I getting played? So, yeah, yeah, no, it was a great moment. And again, uh, the weekend to me in this show has been very inconsistent. From and and, and look, to be fair, 
This is his uh, second, really his first big break. He was in Uncut Gems, but that was like a like a cameo. Um, and again, I don't follow his career, but I know he has some pretty big music videos, and I know some of his music videos are like made shot like movies, but they're not movies. They're not long form character development. So just you know, kind of lightly in the bottle, pretend to be a character of this song I'm making, or whatever. So it's, you know, whatever, whatever. So I'm giving him the benefit of the doubt. This is kind of new to this. You know, he's not the best actor, but there are moments where I feel like the weekend pulls from his personal experience with being in the industry and maybe things he's said, done, experience being in his position uh, as an artist. And he's, I think when he has those moments to lean to that experience, you can see those moments. Now him, he's he can play a creep pretty well. Now I don't know if that's from personal experience or, again, and I don't know. Um, I was gonna call him Armory, thinking of Drake, uh, Abel. I don't know his personal life, um, and I don't know his how he came to be, but he plays a creep pretty well. <laughs> now I don't know if that's like I said from personal experience from managers he's been around, and I'm sure he's met a, a bunch of different people in the in the industry, good people, evil people, corrupt people, but he plays a creep pretty damn well so listen man it, it <laughs> makes you wonder is he method acting no I, I don't like I, said, I don't know him as a as a person uh you know but he he plays a creep really too well if you ask me Tedros 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 uh Chloe is a go yeah Chloe's really good Chloe's really good I like her a lot I like that actress again I'm gonna, I'm gonna have to do some more research on her to see if she's uh because I believe she is an actual artist. I'm going to see if she got some some bangers, some musical bangers. Um, let's see here. I also don't trust Joss after she dismissed the intimacy coordinator after signing. Yeah, that's a great point. Is is like I said, you know, I don't, I don't, <laughs> I'm not trying to be funny, but I don't see myself revisiting this show because I think I've seen as much as I need to with it. But if we were to go back. And look at it from the lens of now seeing that Johnson was this manipulator this whole time. You can see, like I said, going back to that first episode, the very first scene of her turning on, smile, laugh, cry, all that stuff. And then all the little stuff throughout the episode that she's, she's been doing this from the very beginning. <clears throat> I don't know how Johnson's nipples make an appearance. <laughs> You're funny. You're funny. I mean, they they, they, they made quite a, yeah, they were they were there. For a lot of the episode and has been for for the entire show. Uh that's funny. Um I, I get it. Um some of it is definitely just kind of for whatever reason people don't like Sam Levinson for their own reasons. You know, I don't know what it is. I don't I don't know this man's life. But uh yeah some of it is just like hate just to hate but like I said some of it is warranted. Like there are some stuff in the show that I think is completely unnecessary and kind of I wouldn't say crosses the line. <clears throat> But it just feels like it's like the sexual stuff to me, like I'm fine with it because it could be like if it tells a story, like I go back to episode one when she was, you know, pleasuring herself. That to me wasn't like unnecessary. Like, why are we watching this girl just pleasure herself? But we saw it was her choking herself while doing that. That that tells who this person is kind of a little bit, right? Gives you a little bit of character stuff. Uh, but then there's other stuff in the show that's like sexual, like him jerking off in the in the um in the store last week and having like stuff like that to me is like stupid that's just just to be shocking just to have the shock right that's just silly to me but there are moments in this episode going back to the fake online I hate that i can understand that people are like man this show is just like the common denominator is just the substance is just lacking so i understand that, but i do understand the other side of that some people just hate it just to hate it without even really giving it a chance but you know teach your own right um, all right, guys, let me see one last comment and then we're going to get back into the breakdown and then we're going to call it a night because the last few nights I've been doing my rewatch of Mission Impossible, uh, which I've really been enjoying. I, I've all, I've seen all the movies. I own them all, but I'm revisiting it because number one, the new one's coming out in a couple weeks, but number two, I get the opportunity to see it on Tuesday. So I'm just, I'm trying to get, I'm, I'm not trying cause I'm already hyped for the film, but I'm just like revisiting the original Mission Impossible last night. I'm going to. I might skip two. I, I might skip Mission Impossible two because I did not like that film. But I might revisit that one tonight. But I just wanted to get uh, refresh myself because uh, I will be seeing the new Mission Impossible on Tuesday. So keep an eye out for movie fans here in the live chat and like my movie content. I will have an out of theater reaction for um, Mission Impossible. 
<clears throat> um, Dead Reckoning Part One on Tuesday. So keep an eye out for that. Uh, and I'm going to be getting back to my my watch party later tonight. Uh, drug use. Have you not seen a Sam Levinson show? Oh, was someone talking about other? Oh yeah, we were talking about the drug. Yeah, all his shows have drugs. And I think that uh, from what I do know about Sam Levinson, um, he was an addict. You know, Rue was based on his kind of like loosely based on his his experience growing up as a kid. And he had he you know he made his way out of it like you know say what you will about the, about and I don't know him as a person but the story is really interesting this guy that was kind of I think he was homeless and drug addict and and found his way out of it and he's you know have has these hit shows on HBO man this is pretty crazy stuff but yeah all his stuff and everything I've seen of his has had some type of drug uh, well Malcolm and Reed didn't really have drugs that I can remember was in Dan. Well, she was an addict too, wasn't she? I think she was like an alcoholic in that movie. Anyway, all right, let me get, let me see. Don't skip. <laughs> all right, man. What was that? John Woo, right? The director that went, the doves and the motorcycle. I might just watch it just for to have a good laugh. I know it's not a good movie, like narratively speaking, but I might need a good, a good laugh. But I do want to say I rewatched Mission Impossible 1 for the first time in a long time. That movie is excellent. I mean, the first Mission Impossible is an excellent movie and um, really, really underrated, I think. But four, five, and six are like Ghost Protocol, Rogue Nation, and most recently Fallout. Perfection. But I might I might have to chat. <laughs> we'll see. We'll see. Um, but let's get back into it, y'all. So getting back into the breakdown and wrapping it up, these last kind of final moments of the episode – we get a moment where Tedros comes to the bedroom late at night and tells her that she needs to put her truth out there, and she does. Now, the question is, if we're thinking of she's a manipulator, why expose yourself? Well, this is a perfect game for her to play. Like, oh, that's that's a genius idea. Let me make myself even more um, seeming to be a victim. Right. So she goes ahead and goes on a, I believe it was probably like an IG live or something. She goes live and she tells all her fans about her public situation with her mother and how, you know, she abused her and to kind of, you know, get the fans. And again, that's where I feel like the show should have maybe had that more of a in the forefront of playing up to the title for being an idol, like, you know, more of the fan interaction. But neither here nor there, she has this moment with her fans where she lets them know that everything she's gone through and she promises they're going to see the new side of her, this new uh, version of Jocelyn after now. You know, the show, because uh, we don't know the ramifications of the, the photo from episode one that was leaked online, makes you wonder if it was really leaked, right? Maybe this was all part of her plan. But the photo online might have hurt her career. We don't really know, right? The show hasn't really brought that narrative back up. I would assume that it didn't really hurt her career. But either way, she now, everyone knows that she was abused and now everyone's, you know, feel bad for her. So again, this is all a part of this game that she's playing. And uh, like I said, guys, she's great. She's great. Again, going back to Lily Rose um, depth. Look at this. I mean, you would, you would believe, look at the little innocent eyes, the tears, you know, it's a face that makes you want to feel bad for, but it's also a face that can turn turn on you in a heartbeat. So again, some great, great acting going on here with Lily. But let's get into the last 20 minutes of this episode, which is the party time, right? It's nighttime. She's celebrating. She The, the fans are back on her side, potentially, if they've ever left her side. We have a moment where Tedros yet again embarrasses Leia by, I can't remember what, he was just picking on her for no damn reason, telling her to go back inside. <clears throat> well, she was like cleaning up because it was drugs and alcohol all over the place. She was trying to clean up the place, and he's like throwing um, tequila at her through a water soaker. Again, guys, I think Layla is going to put the, the whammies on homeboy, man. She's going to put some paws on him or hire someone. Or now while I'm thinking about it, I mentioned it last week, that remember the line that Isaac – had told Jocelyn and the line was the never saying no. So when Jocelyn said, well, what if I had Ramsey kiss Ramsey? He did that. He was like, well, what if Leia was in here? Would you do that in front of her? He said, yeah, I would, I would do it. Cause I'd never say no. He was like, well, what if I told you to kiss me? And he's like, no, I wouldn't do that. Cause that would piss off Tedros. 
So maybe Layla is going to somehow, some way, make Isaac do something that he doesn't want to do, and it's going to affect Tedro. So I don't know. I think Leia is very smart. She's been playing dumb, very similar to her best friend uh, this whole time. They're both manipulated people. But maybe Leia is going to do something that's going to really muck up the relationship between Tedros and Isaac and have one of them, you know, have them go at each other. We'll see. We'll see. We'll see. But getting to the very, very, very interesting part. Now, at this point in the episode, um, 17-year-old Chloe, high off her ass at this point in the episode, she, very similar to what she did with um, Destiny earlier in the episode, she... Let's. This is a, this, this is the kid in her, right? She's kind of you know kids, you know, at that age, seventeen. You know, we all know we we kind of talk too much at the at young ages. She, but now you added alcohol, alcohol and drugs. She tells Jocelyn because at this point at the party, um, Diana comes to the party and she's getting all kind of you know all Philly Philly lovey dovey with Tedros. And she was like, oh, I'm, you know, I'm surprised she came to the party because she's mad at you. Why would Johnson, why, why would she be mad at me? Well, because you're sleeping with her. She didn't say man, but you're sleeping with Tedros. And, you know, she was all upset because you guys are in this relationship that wasn't a part of the plans. Because episode, again, guys, go back to the tapes, man. I'm going to give myself a, a pat on the back. Not that this show is the most complex show. A lot of stuff is predictable. I'm just saying. I said back in episode one, I feel like that she set all this up. I'm referring to Diane. She set up the club thing, whatever. And we, we already established that when they revealed that Diane and, and, and Tedros were, were in cahoots. Who was that? Episode three? So, or episode two? So as that's happening, Jocelyn, again, she goes from, wait a minute. I thought, and, and this is the, the kind of, I guess the, the twist of the episode, if you want to call it that, is... Are we are we supposed to, as a viewer, and I'm gonna know in the comments, did you all have a moment where you were like, yes, Jocelyn finally knows that Tedros, even though again, if we're playing into the idea that she was allowing him to think that he was controlling her, but she didn't know that he was sleeping with. Diane and that Diane was setting her up. So like she thinks it's just like the the meta-ness of the, you know, a mirror watching a mirror watching a mirror. She thought so she was in control of the whole situation. But now she finds out that Diane, who she just thought was a backup dancer, no harm, no foul. And maybe this is where I'm getting at. Maybe she didn't feel as bad as far as Tedros taking advantage of her, but more so that it was a, a female that she looked that looked upon like lesser than her was in cahoots with someone taking advantage of her. Is that where you all think that this kind of the devastating look that we have from Jocelyn, this devastating reveal that Jocelyn gets was more so that she was like, I can't believe F Tedros, he's harmless. He has a rat tail, but I allow my backup dancer to somehow, some way work her way into a situation, work her way into getting my song is that what that look comes from, guys? That Jocelyn felt disgusted that Diane was able to, to get one over on her. <sighs> let me know. Let me know. But as the conversation happens, and again, this is why I say Lily is great, man, because we just find out, oh, she's a manipulator. Then a part of you is kind of like, I don't, I didn't feel bad for, her, but then a part of you is like, damn, okay, where is this gonna go, right? Because Diane comes to her and is like, oh, you know, I, I felt so bad. You know, she tells her that Nikki's signing me to the deal and I'm going to be singing your song. But, uh, you know, I told Nikki I'm not going to do it unless you, I have your permission, which we all know she said yes as soon as Nikki offered that to her. That's without question. But Jocelyn, again, Lily is so great because she's like – you know, flabbergasted, but she's like, Oh, wiping her tail. Oh, no, I would never want to get in the way of you in my song. Do it, yeah, do it. <laughs> it's great, man. It's, it's again, it's, we got one episode left. I don't know how this is going to play out. This whole relationship, you know, she's going to sabotage her or whatever the case may be, or Diane's going to end up on top. But interesting, interesting moment there. But we go from Tedros 
you know, he's look, he's observing the situation. But then it's like, oh, you think you got one on me, huh, Tedros? Okay, I got you, Playboy. I got you. Because again, Xander told her, or not Xander, Isaac told her that, you know, I can't kiss you because of uh, Tedros, because he's jealous, obviously, right? So she's like, okay, I got something for you. You know what I'm saying? Well, while that is happening, and my gosh, my man was on speed dial. <laughs> Jocelyn texts her ex-boyfriend, which again, I don't know if her ex-boyfriend was the one that had all that stuff on her face in episode one, or if it was someone else. But we we knew a couple weeks ago that he cheated on her, and that's that's why they broke up, unless we were to, you know, we were to assume that. But Rob is now in the house having a good old time with uh Tedros. Tedros, Tedros. They're having, you know, some shots. And Tedros uh, tries to, you know, be the, the masculine, the alpha male in the room. And he's drunk and doing karate kicks and, you know, getting close. And shout out to Rob, man. Rob didn't stand down because I'm thinking of my homeboy in the, in the store last week that just allowed, you know, Tedros to talk down to him. Uh, as well as I'm thinking about the personal chef to let Tedros slap him. Like, I'm just so glad that Rob didn't, like, punk out and be like, all right, man, you win. Like he was like, nah, bro. If you he kept telling him to, I don't know if y'all caught that. <laughs> Rob kept saying to him, I'm gonna play, you know, we can play fight, but if you if you get any closer, we, you know, I, I might have to show you, you know, when I'm really about I thought that was just kind of funny because Tedros is a straight up punk, you know what I'm saying? So it was I, I don't know that, that scene was kind of funny. But was even what was even funnier though. And again, the manipulator. That's what we're gonna call her now, right? The manipulator. She runs into the room, right? After Tedros, who again, you know, let's measure each other's egos. Rob wins round one, but then Rob wins round two, or I should say Jocelyn runs round two, because again, Tedros thinks that he's like, hey, I'm sleeping with Diane, working on this out. How do you feel about that? <laughs> Jocelyn comes in, runs in this man's arms, and it's like, oh. And I can't remember the line that Rob said, but he's like, oh, your boyfriend or like whoever Tedros is, did you know he was a, I can't remember what he said, but it was something like silly, but Jocelyn like dismissed him so quickly. Again, this whole entire show, Tedros is, we've been led to believe that Tedros tells her to, to speak, when to eat, when to dance, when to sing, controlling everything. You take care of me with last week's finale of the episode. She allowed all that, man. This is the real Jocelyn. This is the real Jocelyn, man. She can, woo, I, that's some that's some good stuff, man. I'm sorry, guys. I know everyone, we talked about a lot of the shortcomings of the show, but that's that was like a really, like, even though we just found out that she's a manipulator, she's a monster, just because I don't like Tedros, uh, the character, the just what he represents. So I love, even though I'm, I'm putting my kind of like, oh, this girl's a liar. I'm putting that aside because I just want to see him get pie on his face. I want to see Tedros get embarrassed to the umpteenth um degree. And I was, I was sipping, you know, I was talking about Love of Hip Hop earlier. This is the shit that I was watching for Love of Hip Hop. Like, damn, these people are so evil. <laughs> but, I, but it's funny, man. It's entertainment, man. But she really played him, man. And I loved it. I'm going to try to find a screenshot. I love watching Tedros tearing up, getting all emotional. Knocking on the door, hey, let me in, Jocelyn. Let me in. And she is just, ooh, it's great, man. It is great. But to get to the to the meat and potatoes of what's going on, let me I'm gonna try to find that shot of him just being he's outside the door and he's uh hold on, here it is with the with the prince painting in the background. I loved it. I loved it. This is for the homie in the store. This is for the uh personal chef. This is for uh Leia, this is for all the characters that he's interacted with and 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 looking like a damn fool with. I was eating this scene. I actually, I re, that's why I was running a little late tonight. I was rewatching this scene. Like, yeah, give it to him, make him cry. <laughs> but anyway, as that's going on in the bedroom, things are getting a little bit spicy and hot. And speaking of spicy and hot, all the sex scenes with Tedro and Jocelyn this season has been flat as a pop that's been sitting out for three hours. None of the sex scenes have been sexy at all. Like Lily is, you know, she's a very attractive young lady. Tedros, not so much. <laughs> all of the sex scenes have been very lukewarm at best. 
But the scene between Rob and, and Jocelyn getting it on, y'all, was was what I think the intent of the sexual getting, you know, maybe getting the audience at home being like, you know, turning off, making sure the blinds are closed so the neighbors don't think they're watching porn or whatever. It's like none of those scenes were hot at all. But I'm just saying, Rob and Jocelyn, that was hot. That was some sexy HBO, you know what I'm saying, night, late at night <laughs> type of viewing, man. That's the sexiness that I think the show has been trying to capture, but hasn't been able to do because Tedros is just a disgusting person with a rat tail. But anyway, y'all, as that's going on, again, Tedros is outside banging on the door. Baby, let me in. They're hooking up, man. And like I said, it's, it's pretty hot and bothered. But as it's going on, Jocelyn, it, it goes back to my mentioning earlier about how Jocelyn used to bathe her mom is the same thing she allows Tedros to do to her. So it's almost like this sick thing of like, take care of me, like I take care of my mom. Again, Jocelyn's a very messed up, sick individual. But we get that moment there. But we also find out that how they broke up, it wasn't like just a one one-sided one situation. Rob tells, well, not tells her, he's essentially telling us as an audience, the reason it broke up was because Jocelyn kind of encouraged this, that she didn't want to be in a, you know, a single person relationship to go explore. You know, she's exploring with Tedros. He's exploring with the, his, his co-star, I guess, hooked up. And again, we're led to believe that he, you know, just did that and was being, you know, a jerk to his girlfriend and was cheating on her. But no, like she kind of encouraged that. And she was just, again, just goes into this innocent girl that she just been setting all this up for this whole time, man. It was just like, damn, bro. And he's like, why, you know, why didn't you tell me about your mom that it was sick? And she was just like, you know, I, again, she gets out of him what she needs, which is just, it seems like their relationship was just purely sex, right? He says he knows her. I don't think, I don't think he does. But I think, again, Jocelyn gets out of his relationship. It's just strictly sexual pleasure. Booty call, right? That was booty talk, booty call hours. She called him over. My man dropped. You know, he's doing this superhero movie. He's like, let me go over some, you know what I'm saying? Again, he thinks, again, Jocelyn's great at making these men think that they are needed by her. Nah, bro. It's the other way around. So they're hooking up. Oh, yeah, I got to do this one more time before we wrap up this breakdown because I just love it. I need to put it on replay. Look at that. Let me zoom in. Y'all see that? Keep crying, bro. Keep crying. <laughs> I love it because <laughs> he's such a despicable character. But we wrap up the episode, right? And this is even more like, okay, where is this going to go? Rob, booty call, about to go back on his press tour. He runs into Xander, who is with his girl, the supermodel, whoever that his friend was. Very cute individual, but anyway, put that aside. He sees them. He's like, hey, what's up, bro? It's been a minute. Yada, yada, yada. Do you mind taking this photo with my friend here? She's a big, fran big fan of yours, right? And he's like, sure, man. I'll, I'll take a quick photo of you, whatever. No harm, no foul. And to wrap up the episode, Xander takes the photo. or um, yeah, He takes the photo. Girl's all over him, and he's like, Damn, man, like that was not what I wanted. Like, delete that photo and he leaves. I go back to what Isaac told Xander when he was cleaning him. He said, you know, Tedro sees talent in you, but you're going to need to do a favor for him. If I'm going to let you go, you need to do a favor. So my question for y'all at home is, this favor, it, it's kind of weird because how would have Tedros didn't know that Rob was coming over, right? So like, how would he had? I guess he just had that, you know, Uno card, saving that card. Like whenever I need it, I'm gonna have it. So after Tedros is crying outside, he might have said he might have text Xander, "Hey, favor, cashing in right now, and I got many more I want to use for you. I want you to take a photo of this actor Rob. I'm assuming he's a big actor. He said he's leading a superhero movie." That I want you to take this photo of him hugging, you know, this girl who's, you know, half clothed. And this is the angle. Does he want Z Rob to look bad for Jocelyn? Like he just hooked up with his girlfriend and then Jocelyn sees this photo of him hugging, you know, this girl who's half naked and like she's going to feel bad. 
that doesn't seem like that would bother her. I mean, he she's already he already cheated on her. I mean, and it seems like she doesn't really care. I might be wrong in saying that. Or is Tedros gonna use this to like mess up Rob's career by having him taking his photo with this half naked girl in the headline reads? I don't know <laughs> him taking event. I don't know because maybe the girl comes out and says, "No, he touched me. He gave me a hug. I didn't want him to do that. He was groping me, touching me." Like I don't know if, if they're gonna spin it that way and make Rob see like he's a predator, he's inappropriate, he's cheated on his pop star, and now he's going out for his next victim. Like I don't know the angle. And who's to say this is even the angle from Tedros? This could be Xander doing his own trying to get back at Tedros, right? So that's the question I have for you all: is um, who is this from? Is this from Tedros? Is this from Xander? Is this the favor that he wants him to do? And if this is the favor, is it to make Jocelyn jealous that Rob just, you know, smashed and grabbed and next he's moving on to the next girl literally minutes later? Or if this is to damage his career and make it seem like he's harassing his girl. And now I'm even thinking about it, going back to that line that uh, Destiny said that there's kids in this house by kids, you know, teenagers. Maybe this friend of uh, of uh, Xander, she's underage. Maybe she's 17. She's at this party. There's drugs. There's sex. There's this movie star, underage girl, ruining his career. Is that the angle? If that's the angle, we got one episode. <laughs> How are they going to tie that into Jocelyn, Manipulator, Tedros, Diane, D Destiny, Chloe, yeah, damn, that's a lot of plots to wrap up in an hour. So again, man, this show has these like interesting moments and drama and uh, you know complexity within characters and, and going into the minds of these terrible people, toxic people. But next week's the finale, so we'll see, man, how it all wraps up. To wrap up this breakdown portion, again, we're live now with the live audience. Come and join us. We're going to be back next week for the finale. But wrapping up the breakdown, let me know in the comments, those watching the replay, pros, cons, thoughts, deeper meanings. Would you take away with it? I think this is the best episode of the season, but let me know in the comment section. Like, share, subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. We will be back. Join us next week for the live after show for the finale that I didn't know was coming because I thought it was six episodes. But join us next week. You all have been awesome. Peace out. For my live audience, let me get to the comments because I, as I'm, you know, when I'm talking, I talk, but I'm still thinking at the same time. I'm like thinking of things and I'm like, so let me know if y'all were on the same page with me. What is the picture? Like, who was the purpose of that picture? Is it to end Rob's career, make Joss and Drellis? Is it a Tedros move? Is it a Xander move? Is it a Leia move? Like, what's going on? Let's go to the comment section. Let's see. All right. Uh, well, the first thing I see, like I said, yeah, I, I'm just as shocked as you. So the reason I said that the next week's finale is because let me let me pull up the the episode. If you stuck around um, to see Abundance, the episode ended and it said, you know, the trailer said season finale and it said one episode left. So let me pull it up here to show you what I mean because yeah, I'm totally with you, man. I for the longest I thought it was six episodes, and for the longest eight uh, IMDb said it was six episodes, but if you go on IMDb now. It only has five episodes. So, yeah, right here. Let me pull it up. So, yeah, I'm just as shocked as you all are that it is only five episodes. So, yeah, here it is here. So, um, yeah, so next week will be will be the finale, which is crazy. Because uh, it, uh, it seemed like there was a lot of stuff to, to wrap up there. Uh, yeah, no, I thought the same thing, man, but no, it's, it's, it's only, only five and next week is the finale. And based on the trailer, it seems like Jocelyn's going to be going on tour and something's about to come out about Jocelyn. They like, they pull her to the side and like, we got to tell you something. So something's big is going to happen. Um, and we'll find out next week. So let me scroll on up. Let me see if y'all were with me. Listen, was I the only one that thought that the Jocelyn and Rob was like the only sexy thing about this show? Like everything else in the show has been pretty lukewarm uh, from a, you know, a sexual tension. Like I never felt any of that in the show. But I'm like, yo, they're, uh, you know, these are people that are, uh, you know, getting, getting, getting hot. You know what I'm saying? Uh, let's see. Yeah, Chloe spilling the beans. That was a great, great moment. Uh, Chloe is innocent. 
Yeah, Chloe's great, man. I'm I'm a fan of that. I'm a uh, I'm I'm liking that character. Um, and again, we'll probably be like another ten minutes. So any and and to help me out because you guys have so many great commentary, so many great comments. Put if you have a question, put Q and A in all caps, and then go ahead and pose your question. If you have like an important comment you want to share to everyone in the chat, put comment in all com in caps and then put your comment so i can pull it up on screen this, this just makes it easier uh, or you know if you're feeling a little you know you, you, you feel you know you want to help your boy out you can send a, a super chat it makes it a lot, a lot easier for me to read through it but that you know it's not necessary but like, it does help because it, it makes it bright and colorful and you can see it but neither here nor there pose any of your final comments questions concerns theories predictions uh in the comment section i'll try to bring it up before we wrap it up here but I'm just scrolling on up, see what we got. And you know what? I'm going to sift through these comments, and I'm going to have one more um, commentary here uh, from our sponsor into the AM, and then we'll wrap up tonight's live stream. So take it away, into the AM. Today's video is sponsored by Into the AM. Into the AM is a clothing company with a variety of amazing products such as t-shirts, hoodies, jackets, shorts and underwear, headwear, and much more. Their t-shirts have unique designs, they're incredibly soft and extremely comfortable, and they're made to last. But the best part is, you can get 10% off by using my discount code MOVIEFILES when you're selecting your new gear, which you can find that code in the description below. That's right, ladies and gentlemen, Into the AM is a sponsor of tonight's video. If you are looking for some of the best material on t-shirts, apparel, such as underwear, socks, hoodies, you name it, they have it. Um, very awesome company. I have a, a bunch of their t-shirts in my closet now, and they are great, great looking. They feel good, so definitely check them out. What I'm going to do is actually, there's a link to Into the AM, so you can look again. You guys don't have to buy anything, but just check them out, right? It's summertime. Got some awesome, cool-looking T-shirts with some awesome designs. Check them out, and if you all see something you like that you want to buy for yourself, for your friend, or your family member, you could definitely do so. There's a link in the description of this video that you guys can check out. But at the same time, if you're in the live chat, I'm gonna put the, I'm gonna tap, I'm gonna um, pin it to the comment section. But I pinned a comment with the website and also my discount code. So if you guys want to head over to Into the AM, see if they got some good stuff you like. If you like something. You can obviously use the discount code. And I think they also have a sale going on right now. So you can get the best of both worlds. So check out our sponsor, Into the AM. All right, guys. So let me go over to the comments and see our last little comments here. And then we will call it a night. And what a fun night, man. I had so so much fun with y'all, man. Y'all are y'all are great, man. Y'all are some great people, man. I love uh doing this every week with y'all. Uh, Diane is a threat to Josh, 100%. He stopped getting the rat tail done this week, <laughs> did he? <laughs> I guess I'm just so used to it. I just don't even look at it anymore. Um, Rob, Rob showed up like the Nikki, my man. She said, "Boom, boom, come over." My man knew it was up. It was, it was booty call hours, man. He was he was on that he was on that private jet like the flash. You know what I'm saying? Very, very, very much so. <laughs> that was funny. Uh, the acting and the situation was true. What, what situation, Riz? What, uh, what situation were you referring to? Let me know. Let me know. Oh, uh, this one here, the weekend with his drunk comfort. Oh, it, I don't know if it was trash. I just thought it was, he's a, he's a goof. He's a clown, but uh, I didn't really think too much into it. Um, I'm sure Tedros has some type of investment, Diane. She's banking. Uh, on either Diane or Josh for the payday or both. Yeah, yeah, for sure. And he might lose both of them because, uh, you know, we'll see. <laughs> is he in the MCU or the DCU, the DCEU, because he is in a superhero movie? Uh, that's funny. That's funny. Uh, with it being a, a, a HBO is, is um, Warner Brothers, so I would, I would imagine DC. <laughs> He's gonna be. He's the Flash. He's the Flash in this show. Going back to Aisha's comments, he's the Barry Allen. He's the he's a, he's the Flash actor in this world. Um, what did they say? Rob is. He looks like a poor man's Iron. Man. That actor, I've seen him a ton of stuff, HBO stuff in particular. I've seen his face before. I don't know the actor's name, but I've seen him before. He's a pretty solid actor. Um. Can you see the difference in the chemistry? Yeah, yeah. you're talking about uh, Rob and and and, and Jocelyn. Yeah, yeah, no, you could definitely tell. Because also the the shift in dynamic, like Jocelyn controls that relationship one hundred percent. 
Y'all should see what Thor is doing right now. Like, gosh, man, he's such a cutie, but so destructive. He's like Josh. I was going to say he's like Jocelyn. He's a sour patch. He's a cute little innocent dog, but he could, like, what, Thor, stop. Like, stop, bro. He's like, Tearing into the sheets is ridiculous. Um, did Josh really have to manipulate Tedros to get good point? But again, how does she know that he had those type of connects? Right? She took a took a huge bet on allowing this creep in her house. <clears throat> how is the weekend so bad at acting drunk and high? You know, <laughs> you know I'm not an actor, but I feel like when actors are told to act. In particularly drunk or sleepy um, or dying, it's always like it can go one of two ways: like really, really believable or really, really bad. Um, and and nine times out of ten, especially when people are told to act drunk, it's like it's really rough. I mean, because uh, like for me, when I'm drunk, I don't drink a lot, but when I am drunk, I'm more of like a happy go lucky. Like I'm not all crazy and want to fight people. I'm like a really, I'm a cool, I'm a cool drunk. At least I've been told. Uh, but when you act drunk, it's just like I think a lot of times people will try to act like over the top when they're drunk. So it, I don't know. I'm not an acting coach by all means, but that is a funny comment because like, I don't listen to a lot of his songs, but it does involve a lot of drinking and smoking and, and, and stuff like that. Uh, Good stuff. All right, let me see. Rob, did you know Tedros? Josh? No, yes, that was the comments. Thank you. Yeah, yeah, she played. She she dismissed that fool so quickly. Dude, this is the bad. Really? Let me know, film. Like I said, I thought it was the best one of the season. Um, just finished the episode. Dude, this was a bad episode. It made me wanna made me upset. Let me know what what made you. I thought it was the best episode um, of the season so far. But uh, that's just me. That's just me. <laughs> I don't. I don't risk. They're they're bad. They're bad. Who is that on your uh your thumb your your thumbnail or your icon? That looks like the the actress from uh um Shameless. Let me know. Or oh, if that's you, if that's you, let me know. Tedros is too cre super creepy. Oh, you say it because he keeps his. That's a listen. That's a good point. Rob was like, "Hey, I'm in it, man. You know, because I'm a I'm a I'm a firm believer in equality with sex scenes, right? If girls are gonna have themselves showing their boobs and ass and all that stuff, you know, dudes need to it needs to be the same way equally. You know, obviously, I'm not, you know, they're enjoying the uh, male nudity, but you know, I respect people that hit the gym and, and looking good and whatever the case may be. But I, you know, I'm more of, of of the women's side of it. But I think equality wise, as far as when women expose themselves, the men should do it too. In this episode, there were there's a lot of nudity from, from the man side of things. So it finally balanced out because to your comment here, the weekend, he has a t-shirt on, he has his pants on. It's like, I don't know if that's Abel's insecurity. I, I don't want to come at him. I don't know. Him. But like, I don't know if that's like, Hey, I, I'll allude to doing these things, but I, you ain't gonna see the weekend's ass or his, you know, my, my, his 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 manly parts because maybe he just doesn't want to expose himself like that. But my man Rob was like ass shots. It was a the dude at the pool who private parts out. So yeah, man, the weekend. Uh, that's interesting. That's interesting that Tedros uh, or the I should say Abel the, the the weekend hasn't put himself out there like that. It's really really interesting. Uh. Jocelyn ain't used to Yeah, at least I don't, I don't think she did. <clears throat> Thrives off toxicity. Yeah, I, 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 I definitely agree with that. Um, Jocelyn butt ass neck on the balcony. Yeah. Let's see. Rob, who cares for Josh? Meaning, no time. Yeah, good point, Aisha. Having a crisis. People are upsetting. People are. Are they? Again, I don't follow his career. And I honestly, I've seen some of the commentary online, but I don't really don't pay attention to it like that. Um, but are, are weekend are people really off put by the weekend? And are his fans supporting him or not supporting him? Or his I thought I read somewhere that he's not gonna be. Did I read he's retiring soon or not making music soon? I can't remember what I read so long ago. But let me know for for any weekend fans out there. Is that the word on the streets that he's like getting like hate from his fans? Yeah, I agree. If if people are because I, I think that's the purpose of the character. You're not supposed to root for the character. So um yeah. 
I appreciate Rob calling out, sir. If you called the D, <laughs> he knew it was up. You know what I'm saying? He, he was, you know, he wasn't like, oh, not again. You're using me. He's like, hey, I get something out of this too. Um, question here. I'm confused on why he's crying. He's in love. I thought he was manipulating her or trying to at least to. No, I think that's just a matter of um, just from everything we got from the character that he's always in control. He has his cult. He has these people that follow him. They always listen to what he has to say. He always seems to be in control of the situation. And for the first time in maybe a long time, he knows he gets a taste of his own medicine, that he's been manipulated. He's been taken advantage of, that he's been being played. So I think it wasn't emotionally crying because he was like, yeah, I'm sure there's like a, a bit of an ego there that, you know, smashing my girl. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? There's some of that, but I think it's also more or less him being like kind of caught off guard that he's been been played and emotionally he just can't handle it. But I could be reading that all wrong. Um, but let me see. Yeah. Uh, so Rob's like Chris Evans. Who said he was like Chris Evans? <laughs> um see Nikki was talking about yeah I wasn't sure of the point of that because I think that she carried it yeah you're talking about the photo yeah yeah and yeah I guess so if you guys are answering that question that'd be great because again I don't know if it was just in in Rob's career make Jocelyn jealous you know type of situation was it Tedros call to have Xander take the photo was it Xander doing it on his own I guess we'll find out next week so but I'm curious on what you guys thought about that um oh is that her name zoe thank you yeah the only damaging if it's Zoe's underage yeah and that's what i was saying too like if that is like a career ender for that photo you know comes to find out that she's underage <clears throat> and we know that's like it's always been a thing right actors singers you know just last week they had the trailer for priscilla um who was the wife of um elvis you know if, if i'm not mistaken priscilla when they when when elvis first met priscilla i think she was like 14 years old bro and uh, obviously he married her and had kids and stuff like that but we we it's a lot of a lot of famous actors singers that you know get entangled with uh underage um uh, people and i don't know if the show is going to again it's like how much more can you throw into a show i don't know if it's going to have social commentary on rob his career being affected by that and then the, the the other side of like, there's a lot of unfortunately kids, underage kids that get affected by artists grooming things of that nature. But then there's the other side of the industry of like people that uh, do this right, do the whole, oh let me get a photo and then spin the photo to make it seem like the actor was doing something when they weren't, and making it seem that they, you know, took advantage of them and they didn't. You know, it's all those blurred lines and stuff like that. So, you know, that's another element that the show. You know, it's trying to tackle with one episode left. So we'll see. Yeah, she might claim harassment, underage. Yep. Um, I don't get why Xander would do anything for Tedros after shock after being shocked like that. I don't get why he would even stay there. I think risk the thing is that the show is kind of playing into is like these people are so broken, they don't know how to remove themselves from toxic situations and they make it seem as though like these people are the best that they can be these are the these are people that uh know what's best for me or whatnot so like i don't know you know it was a quick scene but it seems like this 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 ritual of embarrassing humiliating physically and emotionally abusing these people that tedros has become a master at isaac chloe diane Ramsey and all the other people that he surrounds himself with that it breaks these bro already broken people so I think that Xander in a way is working for him because he broke him right so and we because the same thing could be said why didn't Xander leave um Jocelyn all those years ago if 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 Xander felt like Jocelyn was a all the stuff he called her in tonight's episode why is he staying around because he needs her, right? So maybe now he sees that I can use Tedros and I can swap him out, you know, swap Jocelyn out for, uh, or Tedros out for Jocelyn. So it's just a, just a circle of toxicity and, you know, people that are disturbed and have no else, nowhere to go. Who exactly was the girl? Yeah, I think she, yeah, I think it's just, a you know, as Zessie said, it's like a bunch of kids running around this house that are underage, drinking and smoking. Um, it's either Tedros 
or Jocelyn had director Xander to take the photo to get folks to buy tickets to Jocelyn's concert, just like public with abuse. Interesting. So you think maybe Jocelyn, interesting, interesting, interesting. Very interesting. Very interesting. Um, really? That's funny. The girl he took the photo with is uh, Sophia Mudd, who uh, is playing herself as a social media slash OnlyFans influencer. That is funny. And that's another thing about, um, <laughs> as I'm looking her up, I'm not looking up <laughs> her OnlyFans. I'm just, I'm like, oh, I didn't know that. Um, <laughs> but uh, what was I saying? What's his name? Sam Limison. He he likes to put in a lot of like people that are not necessarily actors. Like in Euphoria season two, I can't remember the character's name with the girl with the big lips. She's like a, I think she's like a, like a OnlyFans act or not actor, but she's an influencer. And um, he put her in her show, and he does that a lot. Like he puts a lot of people that aren't necessarily like trained actors in his shows. Um, but yeah, you're right. I'm looking at, again. I'm not looking at her OnlyFans. But she is an actual uh, influence. Wow, two point wow. Does she uh two point uh seven five million followers? Goddamn. I'm just looking at her used to uh, her Insta stories to see if she posted it. She was gonna be an episode tonight. Yep. That's crazy, y'all. Yeah. So wow. Let me go ahead and put my phone aside. <laughs> anyway, that's funny. Appreciate <laughs> appreciate the uh, commentary there. And the actress is, a, is she's an adult. By the way, she's, I think she's 24 years old. She's, she's, she's not, the actress is not underage. If it is to be the case, if that's the reveal, she's a, you know, an adult. I just want to make that clear. <laughs> anyway, uh, let's see here. Yeah, we cleared that up. No, nah, it's only one episode left. I'm catching up to the comments because I'm a little bit behind. So these are probably old comments right yeah it makes you think look at the first two episodes and they were filler like literally episode three now four and hopefully five it's like damn we wasted two episodes just to get to this point that's crazy um i wouldn't be surprised that well i thought i saw an article or a comment hbo came out and said that they're not doing a season two and the article made it seem like they're not doing a season two because it has so much negative feedback and it was you know Review, but not only say review bomb, but it was reviewed poorly. Like when the first reviews came out, the critics rated it like six percent. It was like in a single digits, and then it eventually got up to like twenty nine or thirty percent. So, but again, I don't think HBO. Like I would think HBO would be more like we don't give a damn what the Rotten Tomato score is. Y'all see the viewership for the show, but that was the headlines that it made it seem like HBO didn't want to continue with the show because it was getting so much negative publicity, which I've always been told. Any publicity, good or bad, is good for anything, movie or show. But we'll see. But we'll see. No way this gets season two. I mean, from the viewerships, I would disagree. It's this show again. It's not Game of Thrones, game, you know, House of Dragon numbers, but it's getting. It's the most popular show from a viewership standpoint that I think has been out for the last four weeks. Uh, if you look at like the viewership numbers, like this has high engagement online. Online discourse, good or bad, it's it's a it's what you want from a show is you want people talking about it, regardless of it. You obviously you want it to be talked about in a positive light, but if not, you know, people are still talking about it, even if they hate it. Um, but yeah. All right, guys, any last stuff? If not, just a reminder that you all are awesome. <laughs> That's the truth. The show. Might not be awesome, but you all are awesome. If you guys haven't been told that today, just letting you know. Um, but I appreciate y'all, man. This is always fun. We got one more episode left next week, and um, it's going to be fun, man. But as far as this week on the channel, um, I will be checking out the new Mission Impossible on Tuesday, so keep an eye out for my out of theater reaction. Um, and then this past week, uh, beautiful movie, y'all. If y'all looking for a good movie recommendation, there's a new A24 romantic drama by the name of past lives that is my favorite movie of the year oh my gosh so good so check that out the bear season two if y'all want to see a great television show like peak writing peak acting peak directing just great all across the board the most recent season of uh, the bear is fantastic so check out my thoughts on that i have on the on the, on the channel now 
Um, I got my review out for Indiana Jones and the Dollar Destiny. You all can check that out. Um, so yeah, man, there's a lot of good stuff to, 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 to check out and support on the channel and some cool stuff to look forward to in the coming week. So I'm going to read off these final comments and then we're going to wrap it up. He was on De Yes. Thank you. That's, I knew I've seen him in other stuff, but he was in depth. He was the boyfriend that went missing. Yeah. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, Omar for calling it out, man. Yes. Later meeting Jocelyn disturbs Nikki's plans for the disturbing news. Later meeting. Oh, you're saying that's what the, 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 the mix up would be. I got you. I got you. Uh, <clears throat> <laughs> you said, is it making him see? Yeah, I don't think any of us have sympathy for him. I mean, I'll just speak for myself. I don't know. It might, it might be some weekend fans that might feel bad for him, but I don't. Did they date? Again, I'm not into the weekend, guys. Did, did Selena Gomez and the weekend date? I did not know that. That's, that's news to me. Mm -mm -mm -mm. Oh, you're talking about him not being nude? Yes, if you notice, they keep covering the weekend's body even when they're wearing a towel. It's pulled up high. Yeah, yeah. Again, I don't know if that's just... I don't want to come at him because I don't know him, but insecurities or whatever. Like Lily, J Lily Rose, hey, what you need from me, Sam? You need nipples? You need ass? Tit you need that? She's she's giving herself fully into the, to the role, to the character. But the weekend isn't for whatever reason. Um... It's not equal, which is unfair, I think. Um, as, uh, as bad as he dresses, he might as well get naked. <laughs> as I'm saying, again, I think this is an equal opportunity for both men and women when, when there's so much you know sexual type of uh, scenes. It needs to be equal both ways. Um, Tedros is giving Mar Marilyn Monroe self sex naked. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, those nipples are... <laughs> <laughs> y'all crazy, man. Y'all crazy. Ah, uh, shout out to Nine, man. He wasn't able to join me tonight, but uh, I think he's gonna be able to join us on the finale. But shout out to Nine from Nine Hundred Yards. Uh, y'all seen him on the channel last almost month or so back in succession into this show. Uh, shout out to him and check out. I saw Nine. I still haven't finished. Um, Black Mirror, but he put up a review for uh, I think the best and worst episode of this most season, this most recent season of Black Mirror. So check that out, and of course check out all his great content that he does on the channel. But shout out to Nine, man! Shout out to you, bro. <clears throat> um, let me see any final comments, concerns, questions, and we wrap it up. Uh <laughs> Is Rob supposed to be Top Holland in the Zendaya reference? Was there a Zendaya reference? Did I miss that? Um, but that is funny because he is a superhero, right? Or the, the character. Rob and Zendaya are a couple goals. <clears throat> Rob and Zendaya, you talking about Tom and Zendaya? I think X dies and goes on stage as idol once again. Oh, interesting. How's he going to die? Gonna get killed or murdered. Um, all right. Is Idol 824? It is. It is. It is. <clears throat> I'm surprised it's 824 production. Don't recall seeing a logo. Yeah, there's no logo, just like Euphoria is 824, but you don't see a, a logo there. They're um like obviously HBO is distributes the show, produces the show, but then eight uh A24, I think, have um they produce the show, like they're you know executive producers and they you know bring in some of the talent and whatnot, but it's mostly um you know HBO doing the heavy lifting. But A24 is definitely attached to it. Cherry, yes, that's what I was thinking of, right? Yeah, her, her first name Chloe. Yeah, the, the actress I was talking about with um the most recent season Euphoria. Uh I can't remember the character's name, but the girl with the big lips. Yeah, oh, she, and I said she was a uh, an influence. She's a, yeah, she's a she's a porn star. Shout you know, shout out to her. What's her name in the show, by the way? <clears throat> was hanging out with uh, Fez. I can't remember her name for whatever reason. She was funny though. She was super funny. Oh, okay, thank you, Aisha. Uh, they debunk. They haven't decided. Okay, thank you, thank you, thank you. again. I just saw the headline, and people again they're. Spin it in a way that it makes it seem like the show is just 
you know, people hate on it. But yeah, they made it seem like the weekend was like, oh, I don't care. So I thank thank you for that, for clarifying that. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, Big Little Lies got a season two. They did, and it was bad. Ugh, I did not like Big Little Lies season two. Season one was fire, but season two was trash. They should have just stopped that season one, if I'm being honest. Yeah, the bear is fire, guys. Check it out. Yeah, I saw that. I, I didn't watch the second season. I watched the first episode, Jeremy. I just couldn't get into it, but I really enjoyed season one <clears throat> of that show, but I just couldn't get into season two. Um, Heard good thing. It, it, and you're here again, Jeremy. Fantastic. Favorite movie of the year. Really great. Yes, Chef. Listen, I love it. I love it. Uh, do you think the bear is running its course? Oh, no, no, no. We need a season three. Did you not see season two? We need a season three ASAP. Hopefully next year. Hopefully next year. I agree and disagree. I agree with... I disagree because... You put all caps like major, like season one wasn't as fire as it was because season one was great. It was one of my favorite shows last year. But I do agree with you that it is a leap in and not that it's diminishing how great season one was. But, oh, my goodness, season two was just so much more layered. You know, at first it was kind of odd. I, I love the, the bear. We're going to wrap it up here. But I was like, oh, man, it's, where's the chaos? Where's the, the food? Where's the kid? Like, but I love that it was like, no, we're going to show you who these characters are. We got more of Tina. We got more of Marcus. I love episode six, guys. No spoilers, but those stars in episode six, my gosh. Uh, I love episode six, but I love episode seven when we get Cousins episode, Cousin Richie. Oh, man, that episode is great. Episode nine. I mean, I love The Bear. Season two is my favorite show of the year so far, and I, I find it very hard to believe that something's going to be better than the most recent season. It was excellent. It was excellent. Um, all right, but we are going to wrap this party up because it is a good time. Yo, y'all see that trailer? Y'all see that trailer for challengers? Yeah. Zendaya. She's, 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 man, I'm, I'm loving it. I'm a big Luca fan. I love everything he's done so far from, uh, they do big fish years ago. Call me by your name. Suspiria. Last year, uh, Bones and All. He did a show on HBO, by the way, too, guys. If you want to look for uh, a really interesting show. Um, oh, man, I can't remember the name of it. But it was on Max a couple years ago. Um, we Are Who We Are, I think was the name of it. It was a really good show. But I'm a Luca fan. I'm really looking forward to that movie coming out later this uh, September, I believe. But I think on that note, we are going to call it a night. And we're going to end on that. Thank you, Zia. This show has been hard to watch, but these, these discussions, Faye, thank you. These discussions have been fantastic, and it's been great because of you all being uh, um, attached to these conversations. And I really, really, really appreciate y'all, man. So on that note, we're going to end the big splash. Thank you, Jeremy. Um, very unsettling. Uh, <laughs> you guys are going to see, I can go hours with y'all because that's how dope y'all are. I love interacting with y'all. But again, thank you for being here tonight. Keep an eye out for my out of theater reaction for Mission Impossible Dead Reckoning uh, in a couple days. And check out all the content on the channel now, past lives, the Bear Season 2 commentary that I have, um, Indiana Jones and the Dial of Destiny, and a couple other stuff that's on the channel now. So like, share, comment, subscribe to the channel. You all are great. You all are awesome. Have a great Monday. Have a great week. And I'll see you guys on the next video.